Good evening. Welcome to the regular bi-monthly town board meeting for Monday, June 26, 2023. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. As always, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we had planned to have our commendation awards for Daisy Troop 40264 uh, for donating their cookie sales to the Tuxedo Summer Camp Tuition Program, which was very generous and very uh, civic-minded. Uh, looking out for other children, I think, is uh, certainly worthy of commendation. Uh, but due to the weather, I think, Maria, um, you, it's been postponed to the next meeting? Yes, they called me uh, when it was thundering and lightning, and they were like, I don't think they want to come. <laughs> yeah, I think so that was Sue Hayward, too, who was the person that um, headed the um, summer camp fund uh, program from St. Mary's. Uh, she was going to also join us, but we'll have it at the next meeting, hopefully. So we look forward to that, uh, recognizing their efforts. Um, this evening's agenda, we have a public hearing on proposed amendments to the 2022 special use permit for the Tuxedo Farms Planned Integration Integrated Development. Uh, and we have six agenda items. Uh, one is a resolution to enter into an agreement with Renaissance Entertainment Corporation. Uh, second one is a resolution to consider accepting a bid for proposal for the repairs to the train station. Third is a resolution settling of tax tertiary claim. Four is a resolution to authorize an RFP for a highway truck. Five is a resolution to authorize a bid packet for police vehicle outfitting. And six is a resolution to appoint summer camp employees. Uh, we also expect to have discussion on the short term rental local law and consideration for hiring an additional full time police officer. Um, so I'll open the floor to public comment on agenda items. I'll start with our in-house guests. Uh, yeah. None, no public comment. No public comment. Uh, any public comment from our virtual audience? If you do and we're actually on the item, we'll be happy to uh, take your comment. Uh, I'm sorry? No, 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 no. Our hand was up. Uh, I'd like to recognize that Michelle Lindsay is participating virtually. Michelle, I hope you're feeling okay and uh, good to see you and have you with us virtually. Yes, uh, thank you. And so um, we also have Detective Stefan Christian here this evening. I understand you have some business before the board, Steph? Yes, I just wanted to. Wait, give them a microphone. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, come on. No, it's, no they can't hear it's, it's, it's not for us. Yeah. It's for the people at home. Yeah. In fact, you'll think it's not working because it doesn't make your voice any louder in here. <laughs> I officially wanted to uh, come to the town board meeting tonight because the next one will be July 10th. And I um, just wanted to go on record that I will be officially retiring from the town effectively July 6th with the state July 7th, payroll wise July 6th. So uh, just wanted to hand in a resignation slash retirement letter, put it on record that you guys have it. And it's been a pleasure working for the town. I started here in 1996 as a part time dispatcher in the train station. And we moved up to the new station. And in 2010, I got promoted to detective. And um, Altogether, it's about 22 and a half years with Tuxedo, 24 total with the New York State. So it's time to move on and uh, find a different hobby and job. But thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations. That doesn't mean you can't come to the meeting. That's right. <laughs> I will be a town resident next time. <laughs> 
I uh, just want to say that Detective Christian is a wealth of knowledge, experience, and talent, and he's going to be sorely missed. So if I could drag him back in, I will try. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not leaving the town, so I will still be here for at least three or four more years. Oh, that's good. So now you can work as a consultant. <laughs> I have to say, I don't know if you remember this at all, but before I was on the town board, uh, my dog fell in this underneath this car ditch, and I think you helped me get, get him out. He was, at the time, um, you know, was ill, and he was 100 pounds, and <laughs> you came to my aid, and we were like... <laughs> I am a dog lover, so... <laughs> so thank you. Bosco and I, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, it was a pleasure. So... Well, Steph, I mean, I never had really crossed paths professionally other than the many trips that you helped out my next door neighbor, Dr. Cote. And unfortunately, he passed in January, but uh, always would tell me what a professional job, and I was there to witness it. Uh, the respect that you always added to the call. And, uh, you know, he was a proud man. And obviously didn't like getting picked up off a shower floor, but uh, um, always felt totally respected and well-treated and, uh, and always would tell me, and I'd say, yep, yeah. uh, Steph always was there. And uh, your work with the fire department is, I, I hope you continue with that. I might be... I, I might be done as chief at the end of this year, but I'm not going anywhere once again either. I, I don't know. I don't know where the uh, future brings me, but I don't plan on moving for at least three or four more years, or maybe maybe never. I just except Yankee Kiss. Except you know, <laughs> I just want my pension not taxed, so I really like to go somewhere where it doesn't touch my pension. But we, New York State does not tax your pension. Uh, you know, uh, but I mean, yeah, the I'm trying to get him to stay. <laughs> Yeah, New York State doesn't, because I'm a teacher. I mean, yeah. yeah, I get my pension tax rate. <laughs> but really, it's always been a pleasure working with you, and I'm uh, glad that you'll still be in my neighbor in Laurel Ridge. And, like I said, I'm not going anywhere. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to transition. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, you know, in person, as opposed to getting it third, you know, second hand or handed in or whatever. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You. Working the rest of this week in July 4th, and that's it. So I have six shifts left. So. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Yes. <laughs> right. Have a good night. Have a safe thank tour. You, sir. Okay. Um, bring a tear to my eye here. Um, I think we're going to start out with our program of caring. No? Um, we, the... Oh, uh, they did. They, they, asked they asked for us to wait until seven thirty yeah. because they oh, couldn't, that's right. they right, couldn't right, join right. us to make their initial presentation. So okay. I think what we should do is move on to the agenda. We might as well move on to the agenda. Okay, why not? Then we'll we'll pause when they when they get here. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I just have to see how the sausage is made. Um. So skipping to page. Page four, thank you. Agenda item number one. Resolution then to an to agreement with the Renaissance Entertainment Corporation. Uh, this is agreement between Renaissance Entertainment Corporation and the town of Tuxedo. Um, I don't think I need to read the entire resolution. Uh, I've been working with Chief Trezino on this. Uh, basically, uh, the biggest addition in this agreement between this and last year is the addition of six traffic agents, Chief. And uh, I think that's a job description that really fits the need. Uh, this is a, a traffic agents that will work directly with for Tuxedo PD um, in, in negotiating and discussing this with uh, Renaissance Entertainment. Uh, um, we made it clear that these are traffic agents that are working to improve traffic flow, not parking attendance. Yes, uh, sir. Any such thing. And uh, uh, Chief, what's your uh, thoughts about these ad additional positions? Uh, so many times when I talk to the, the citizens of our community, um, one of the concerns they have is directly related to the traffic. Um, it is overwhelming. 
uh, you know, and for the police as well. So, you know, we brainstormed it and talked a number of times about what possible resolutions are. Uh, I've seen like programs work in other areas. So working for us, you know, for the PD and for the town, they fall under direct command of, you know, what we need to get accomplished for public safety and, you know, making sure that our communities are able to get to where they need to go, um, as opposed to, you know, just trying to park on the property. So uh, the Run Fair is trying to address it also, likewise, on their property. Uh, with their own hirings and everything. So we've had good discussions together. Um, everybody recognizes that you know, we all have to try to take a step forward, go in the right direction. So for us, I absolutely think that this is gonna be a, a huge asset to us. Great, so uh, um, just to make it clear, the rent fare is paying the full freight. It won't cost the town anything. Um, and as of last year, the same thing, they paid for all of the police time there. It didn't cost the residents anything. Uh, in the last few years, um, we had introduced the notion of uh, municipal shared agreements with uh, Orange County Sheriff's Office and New York State Troopers that will continue. Uh, so we're just beefing it up even further. And uh, I think it's 15 days this year the fair runs and uh, um, we'll have this detail every day. And uh, I think you've already been recruiting some good people. And yes, so uh, hope to have that that list filled out soon. Um, but we do have you know quite a few applications and everything that went through the backgrounds, and we have some talent. So a great opportunity for people that are looking to go down the road of law enforcement, you know, one way or the other. So, so the agreement is a very similar uh, to last year. Um, I'll just. Read the paragraph about the traffic guards. The Town of Tuxedo Police Department shall provide for uh, for said purposes one employee officer and one vehicle on each Saturday and Sunday beginning August 26th through October 8th, as well as Labor Day, including travel time for the term of this agreement at a rate of $120 an hour per officer. In addition, fare shall reimburse the town for all expenses related to the deployment of up to six traffic guards assigned at the discretion of the tuxedo police chief or police lieutenant or billed at an hourly rate of $27. I just actually want to also, um, at the chief and the uh, lieutenant or who's ever in charge of the day, um, we have the authority to add a second officer and I'm pretty sure that probably will be the normal caseload. Um, and again, at the expense of the rent fare and uh, they paid the tab, no questions asked last year, and I do expect them. Actually, what we did add to this contract is um, an escrow. Uh, so an escrow deposit of $19,500 will be applied towards the town's cost payable to the town of Tuxedo no later than Friday, August 11th. It's estimated that the cost for police officer coverage is $52,000 based on the 2022 services provided. Additional traffic agent detail is estimated to be $26,000. So we'll actually get a good chunk of the money up front and we'll build them accordingly uh, every two weeks. So um, the town is definitely better covered than ever, uh, both financially and uh, professionally by our police force. So. Got to be better. Can I ask so, you a question? Please. I know that last year, well, I live in Northern Tuxedo, so like, <laughs> we get the brunt of it um, when they are, you know, especially on the busy weekends. Last year, they made a change so that tickets weren't, like sometimes in the years prior, people could buy a ticket and they could go anytime. And then last year, they changed that policy and made it so that people had to go on the day that the ticket said. And that made a huge difference, particularly at the end where you didn't have like half of New York online at Rule 17 to try to get into 17A. Is that going to be the same this year or are they, do you know? Well, I can address that. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, um, they're restricting ticket sales numbers per day and uh, um, also making a real effort to communicate with people when days are sold out so that people don't come up uh, 
you know, with no chance of getting in. And you know, basically, we don't want another Woodstock up here where people are just lining up with no chance of getting in. So um, we've certainly learned over the last couple of years. So all of those strategies will be uh, not, only, not only continuing, but uh, expected to get better. With, with the lessons yeah, it made a big difference. I thought last year at the end, especially at the end, that they were that was unmanageable as opposed to like really like ridiculous. <laughs> so I, I actually should have made a motion. Uh, uh, to, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, uh, consider this resolution to enter this agreement uh, with Renaissance Entertainment. Do I have a second on that? I'll second. Seconded by Deidre Murphy. Uh, obviously, we've been discussing this, uh, but. Uh, town board member Michelle, do you have any questions or comments on? Uh, I, yeah, I just have one question. When I was reading through the agreement, uh, there wasn't any discussion about how they're going to keep a through lane open. And I know we had discussed that a couple of years ago, but it just never happened. You know, it, it's just the way the people are there. I just don't know. You know, they, everybody goes in the left lane and then you can't. It, it, it completely snarls the, the traffic from Warwick. People just can't get through. So, so obviously, this is a, a hiring agreement, but certainly um, the, points that you're, the point you made is exactly why we introduced the traffic agents, so that they would be, uh, we're expecting cones to be placed along uh, Route 17A from uh, Long Meadow Road up to the parking area. And we expect to have, there's a couple of major pinch points, obviously, right at the parking lot is where it goes back down to one lane. And so the idea here is uh, that officers at Long Meadow Road and as people get onto 17A, there'll be signage that says through traffic, left lane, Renfair parking, right lane only. And Chief, you want to address that a little bit? Uh, you're right on, sir. So uh, you know, traffic is a wild animal, and we're going to do our best to control it and tame it. Um, you know, you can't predict people that aren't going to listen, but we're going to enforce the vehicle and traffic laws and do everything we can to keep that left lane open for that through traffic. We don't want it to slow down or to jam up everything, because we all know, you know there's a domino effect that, that happens after that. So um, that's our plan right now. Uh, yeah, that's the major exactly. pinch point. And the other place we can see the uh, traffic <laughs> agents working is on Brammertown Road to uh, keep people from uh, using Waze and Google Maps to get around uh, the 17A entrance. And so rather than just, first of all, not having a, a uniformed officer there who has obviously the skills that we want at the actual gate and in the premises. Um, so we expect to have a much better coverage plan there, Michelle. Okay, no, that's all sounds great. And I know the difficulty in getting people to follow, but um, I would suggest if you could, the cones, as soon as you turn onto 17A from the ramp off of set Route 17, as I got stuck there, it took me like half an hour to get just to the, so I could turn around by Laurel Ridge. Yeah, so, so one of the problems is uh, people come up Long Meadow Road again to get around the 17 traffic. And so um, it's two lanes there. Uh, I'm sure the, the chief and the officers will strategize daily. Exactly. But it, it's necessary to every day. You know, it's a fluid um, situation. So depending on what the traffic patterns look like that day is going to dictate how we put our personnel and you know, what our best enforcement efforts are gonna to be to deal with that specific day. Okay, thank Any you. Any other comments on the actual agreement? I would just offer the amendment that you're empowered to sign it. Okay. Uh, so, um, Made a motion and uh, seconded by Deirdre Murphy. Now just take a vote that also includes authorization for the supervisor to sign the agreement. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Let's move to page two.
excuse me, item two, page seven. Page seven. Resolution to consider accepting a bid proposal for repairs to the train station. Um, let me just keep some history on this. Uh, so the train station was renovated in 2009. An amazing job was done uh, uh, to a historic building. And as you can imagine, wear and tear has taken its toll on the building. And uh, this town board has been trying to get a renovation plan developed for almost three years now. Um, we initially came up with uh, some specifications and uh, put those out for bid. And we had gotten one bid probably more than a year ago, I think. Over a year ago. Over a year ago, which was rejected. Uh, so we brought in the town engineer, uh, Sean Hoffman, working with Rob Dolbaum, myself, Jay Reichgott, and uh, uh, came up with an even more ramped up RFP, made sure that everything was considered to repair this building to its fullest uh, glory. And uh, also because it's a historic building, we have to be sure that we don't change anything, which is part of the plan. Nothing will be changed, just restored. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, actually, it's a difficult job to get uh, contractors interested in uh, because um, government requires uh, uh, um, what's the word? I'm thinking? Prevailing wage. Prevailing wage, uh, and uh, this is a job that requires probably four or five different specialties. So. Um, we needed a project manager, a general contractor to run this uh, project. And uh, so we put it out for bids. Uh, Marissa, you had some interest, um, four or five contractors came in, something like I that? I had some inquiries, and there was two different companies that came in person to look through the bid packet and didn't end up taking the packet, though. So. We only had two companies that requested the packet that actually took it. So uh, as a result of that, we decided to extend the bidding process, I believe, twice already. Yes. And uh, uh, so Rob and I both contacted other contractors just to make, let them be aware that the proposal was out there. Uh, long story short, we got one bid from TAM Enterprises in Goshen, New York. Um, uh, the total comes to $288,000, which sounds like a scary number, uh, but um, the work uh, is to replace all deteriorated, deteriorated exterior wall panels, exterior trim, uh, uh, spot replace uh, slate tiles on the roof, uh, new gutter and downspout along the Sigelman Tower mezzanine east elevation. That was a major problem that was causing water to run down the back of the building and rot the wood on the back side of the building. Uh, the work in the replacement of existing restroom fixtures, uh, power wash the entire building, clean the windows, uh, clean and paint the entire interior, um, regrout exterior pavers. Uh, replace a broken window and work to stain and paint the entire exterior of the building. So um, our engineer, Sean, had sent the town board a memo. I don't know. I don't think it's in the packet. But, yeah, sorry? I, I it's not. It's not in the packet, but oh, I, you do have it, Marianne. I think I do, too. Uh, Did you get it? I did. I got it. I didn't print it out. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll read it. Um, dear Supervisor English and Town Board, sealed proposals were received for the reference project Friday, June 16th for repairs to the train station. Despite advertising in the town's official newspaper as required and contacting local contractors, as I just stated, only one bid was received as follows, TAM Enterprises. TAM Enterprises of Goshen, New York, submitted the apparent low bid. Their bid included the required bid security, qualification statements, uh, various documents that are required, 
Tam has previously performed similar work for several of our municipal clients. In our opinion, Tam possesses the knowledge and experience necessary for this project. We spoke with the representative of Tam and they are prepared to proceed should you choose to make an award. Uh, legal review, Howard reviewed the documents. How would you found the contract, uh, everything up to snuff, so to speak? Absolutely. Thank yep. you. It's in good shape. It's ready for action by the town board if you so choose. Okay, thank you. Um, financing prior to awarding the contract, we recommend you confirm with the town finance department that funds are in place, cover the total cost of the project, award of the contracts under New York State bidding law, bidders must hold their price for 45 days, um, summary and conclusion, we believe you satisfied the requirement to seek competitive proposals. The apparent low bidder TAM Enterprises is capable of performing the work and if Attorney Prater advises as he just did, the bid documents are legally sufficient and funds are available and award may be made. Uh, and I did speak with Sean personally again today and he's uh, convinced that this is a firm that could get the job done and done correctly. He also advised me that uh, they would complete the job in under 90 days, which I think is an important concept as well. So um, I'll make a motion. Do I have a second to uh, consider this resolution? I'll second that. Seconded by Jay Reichgott. Uh, open for a town board questions, comments. I'd point out that 90 days is an aspirational goal, not a promise. Uh, I will be aspiring that their promise uh, comes true. But yes, thank you for pointing that out, absolutely. Um, I will point out that where the money would come from um, would be from the A fund balance, which on January 1st, and I have no reason to think any of this changed, if anything, it would have gone up, is $1,200,536. I'll also point out that the town will certainly be applying for matching funds from the Tuxedo LDC uh, to try to offset half of those costs. Um, I have a question for that. Go ahead. So two things. One is, what are we going to do about um, providing for the fact that going forward, we have a maintenance account so that this doesn't happen again? I mean... 2009 to 2023 is a long time to not have painting, broken windows, downspouts. So I'm asking what we can do about taking some of the permit money that we get for the parking and put it into a maintenance account so that every year we take a look at what we need to do to keep this up to date. Well, I certainly don't object to that. Um, That's I mean, a good so. And the other issue I have is what portion of this is going to be applied in the FDC account uh, branch? Um, I'm certainly not prepared to answer those questions. Uh, it's, but it's not under this? I wouldn't think so. No. Okay. No, the question is, so the question is whether or not we want to approve this contract, whether or not we get monies to help pay for it. I mean, we have... I mean, we have a fund balance. Yeah, that, and I that's think a good that, question. You yeah. know, whether we get money from, uh, we, you know, from LDC or not, we can still cover it. And it has to be done, like Deidre said. It's a long, it's, you know, 14 years of nothing right. having been done to the train station. It definitely needs that, especially with weather getting more. I think, I think it's not quite fair and not quite fair to our highway department to say that nothing's been done in that building. Right, right. No, but Sorry. painting and things that are, <laughs> right. you know, like... People paint their house every seven years or whatever it is, but that kind of thing. Well, all I can say is that as far as I can tell, everybody who's sitting on this board has been working to try to get this thing yeah. moving. I can't speak for previous administrations and why they chose or well, didn't choose to Well, that's one of the reasons repairs. I'd like to make sure that there's some kind of provision so that going forward, when we're not here, there's, there's a fund that annually people can tap into to make sure that, that we stay on top of this because I think it's a wonderful asset for the town and you know keeping it clean keeping it painted is really I think very important landscape I think it's very important yes 
No argument. Um, if I may, Ed, we did talk about the uh, permit fees that we collect for you know people who park at the train station. That that is a logical uh, fund source to put aside, and maybe you know instead of let's make a and uh, not part of this resolution, but separately, let's make a decision to move forward with that. I mean, you certainly can, but that restricts how you use funds. So it's really just, that's a budgetary question to, uh, as to what, how you want to earmark money in the future. I certainly don't have an objection to it. Um, not necessarily part of this resolution, but associated well, you know there's, there's we, obviously a concern by this board to continue to maintain town properties and that's our responsibility as the town board so um i just echo that's what this town board is doing and uh and, and our i totally i mean i totally agree but we've talked about doing it so maybe we should so start I, or i guess you know, what we need that prepare is prepare a some, resolution so then i guess what we need time. is for someone to champion figuring out what that resolution is going to look like and, and how it's going to be, how those funds are going to be earmarked, et cetera, what the proper language is and, yeah. and all I'll of that. that. No problem. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? Do we know where those funds go now? I think, yeah, they go to the A fund. They go to general funds. Fund. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in essence, that's where we're drawing the money from. But that's where we're, yes, but there, it's really not a question. I mean, of course, all loose change goes into the A fund. Right. Um, the, the, this is really talking about, you know, a dedicated earmark of a certain amount of money per year to go into right. a to a locked box, if you will, for repairs. Yeah, and it's just a discipline. That's why. Yep. So okay. just it just takes putting together. And Ms. Deirdre uh, has I'll said that it. she's on it. Any further discussion on this? I'm good. All right. Um, I'll take a roll call vote. Jay Reichkamp? Aye. Ken English? Aye. Maria May? Aye. Deidre Murphy? Aye. Michelle Lindsay? Aye. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Should we, I think Greg is in, so. Should we go back to their open hearing? Are they here? Everybody's here? Okay. It looks like they're all here. Sure. All right, so I see our guests for the public hearing from Related out here. Um, Mr. Brad Schwartz, I think you'll be leading this for Related this evening, Brad. So we have to, uh, Brad, you're muted. I am muted. No, I'm good. Very good, sir. Um, let's see. Let me get this set up. Page so, two. Page two. So we set a public hearing for this evening um, to consider a special use permit, Tuxedo Farms planned integrated development. Um, uh, the resolution. Uh, the resolution is, is further on. I mean, all you have to do right now is open the public hearing. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing at 7.35 p.m. Um, so how would, would you mind teeing this up for us, what we're considering this evening? The applicant has um, been going through planning board review of um, the site specific uh, requirements of the uh, development. And during the course of that review, uh, certain elements have presented themselves that are um, made a little more difficult by the uh, provisions of the special permit. Um, and so therefore there's certain provisions of the special permit that need to be evaluated, that have been evaluated. And that um, if the town board agrees uh, to be changed, uh, the planning board has reviewed the, the, those issues and has issued a letter to the town board uh, recommending uh, certain changes and uh, the applicant is here this evening to uh, spell out what those changes are uh, for the board's consideration. 
Great. Thank you, Howard. And um, if I could jump in, I guess, good evening, Mr. Supervisor, members of the town board. I'm just for the record, Brad Schwartz from Zarin and Steinmetz on behalf of the applicant. Joined this evening by our consulting team, Greg and Dylan from Related are out of town and could not be here tonight. Um, Howard, for the second meeting around, and thank you again for teeing up uh, what this application is, is all about. Um, we, we believe, um, members of the board, that these are relatively minor amendments to the special to the special permit that was adopted back last November. As Howard mentioned, we do need some relief um, from the special permit in light of us digging deeper into the design of the drawings as this project has progressed through the planning board. Um, the specific application before the planning board is um, site plan subdivision for the commons, as well as Quail Road. And when we say amendments to the special permit, I just want to be clear on that. There's a couple of changes to the special permit document itself, and the rest are to the appendices that are attached to the special permit, specifically the smart code, the design guidelines, the performance standards, as well as the pre preliminary plan set, because that's where the road hierarchy plan is located. And the, there are a couple of different categories of what the amendments entail. Um, for example, the ARB and site plan process by the planning board, road hierarchy, sidewalk, parking, um, a plant list, um, pavement specification, and some architectural features such as allowing for balconies in addition to bay windows. So we'll go through all those items during our presentation tonight to show the town as well as the public, it is a public hearing, exactly what changes that we're proposing. Again, we think they're minor in nature. I know there was some concern that the project may be changing. I assure you in the public, it is not. The project is fundamentally the same as what your board approved back in November. We're gonna go through um, essentially the same presentation that we made a couple of weeks ago. However, this time with the benefit of comments by the town board and staff that we're, we've received the past few days, and we genuinely appreciate those comments. It will allow us to shape the presentation tonight, and we hope to answer many of your questions along the way. So I'll begin by talking about the change of the special permit itself, and there's two of them. The first relates to the sequencing of the ARB and planning board review process. The way the special permit is currently drafted and approved, ARB comes first before site plan. We're proposing to reverse that sequencing, largely in part because the architecture for all of the buildings within the commons just hasn't been advanced yet. We're not ready for that at this point in time. So what we would like to do is secure site plan approval for the entire commons based upon the building footprint layout. That in turn will allow us to install all the site work, right? All the horizontal infrastructure and that site plan approval will be conditioned upon ARB approval. So that as each building site is proposed for the vertical development, would have to go to the ARB for architectural review of each individual building. And the first phase of the commons is about four buildings and we'll be ready to go to the ARB for those first grouping of buildings later this year. We were also careful to build into the process um, a step where the ARB would get conceptual review or preliminary review of the architecture even before site plan. That way the ARB can at least weigh in and opine hopefully that we're at least on the right path with more of the details, the material boards and the colors and all those kinds of architectural details would come later. So again, there's a lot of red on your screen, but this is all about reversing the sequencing. So site plan can become before ARB with some concept reviewed by the ARB even before site plan. And that's what all these changes relate to. So I'll, I'll pause for a moment to see if anyone's any questions about this particular change specifically. Well, as mentioned, uh, this has been reviewed by the planning board. Oh, thank you, Jay. And uh, I have been to the behind the scenes meetings and to every planning board meeting where you presented. And uh, um, the ARB review certainly makes sense to me. Um, uh, getting the planning board involved in the process uh, not looking to have plans fully approved before uh, the entire site plan is developed. Um, so I'm, I'm, I understand that notion. 
Uh, I, I understand we'll also be talking about parking, but I think right now we're just uh, talking about the site plan and the ARB uh, sequencing. Yep. Um, I don't have any further questions about that. Do you, Jeff? No, I'm good for now. I'm good. That makes sense to me. And I'll, I just want to also point out uh, John Banyo, chair of the planning board, is here. And John, please feel free to weigh in on anything you feel comfortable. So the site plan, my question. Please, go ahead. So the site plan would be the first. I, your microphone, okay. just this. So as I understand it, the site plan is, would be the first step, and that would include any subdivisions. Mm -hmm. And then after that, there would be um, a, review, a review of what the buildings are, and then an RBA, an, an architectural review. That's, that's how That's how the steps work. Yep. And right now we're only just, talking about the comments. Right. And that's that's right. what we're asking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The comments, right. The issue now is that as it's currently written, architectural review of the entire Correct. piece has to be finished before site plan can be. Right. And the site plan being one site which may have subdivisions on it that then would be reviewed by for the buildings and then an architectural review. That's what this is this that's is. That's this is looking for. Okay. That's I just wanna Clarify. Sure. I like the fact that you will, might go to the ARB for specific, you know, in general, some aspects of it, so that all of a sudden it's like, ooh, that's not what we thought, you know. Yeah, they're weighing in along the line. Yeah. And, and just to clarify a small nuance, the, the site plan subdivision together is the first step, right? Okay, so it's, that was my question. Okay. So site plan slash subdivision, which again, even that can't be approved until the ARB at least weighs in preliminarily. Then the site plan and subdivision can be approved together, conditioned upon going to the ARB. And again, what that would allow is a building permit. Actually, if you go to the next slide, see numbers three and four, they're, they're both governed building permits. Number three governs the issuance of building permits for site work. Again, the infrastructure that could be issued following site, following site plan approval. Number four, building permits for, again, the vertical construction, which again, can only happen after ARB approval. Brad, this is John. In relation to Deidre's question, <clears throat> I was under the impression that subdivision is going to come first because Kelly is actually drafting a resolution for subdivision only for our, our next meeting this coming Thursday. So, so John, Mr. Chairman, it can work that way as well, right? So I, I guess what I was meant, meant was site plan subdivision comes before ARB. Right. What comes what first, we're... site plan or subdivision doesn't necessarily matter. Okay. So I have a question in the, the preliminary uh, site plan, that's gonna have just some preliminary drawings of what the vertical construction will be. Yes. And where the retail is. Yeah. This isn't there's, I know we're going to get to parking later, but isn't there some question about that there was a parking garage that you, you now might eliminate? So, so um, Michelle, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, we saw that comment. So we're going to clarify some of the perceived programmatic changes that, that um, are just not the case, right? So there's still the garage is not exactly where it was shown previously. So we'll get into that in some of the other details um, about the project that were raised. When we get to the, the, the actual part. We, we, we have a slide later on in this presentation and we'll show you that. Okay, good. So um, given again, what John was just saying, uh, what is it that's happening Thursday? The subdivision? I, I guess I'm a little confused it, about what that is. What is being subdivided? Nothing's being subdivided in, in my view. We have a public hearing on uh, Thursday. And right. the, only, the only potential approval, at least as I understand it right now, would be for the subdivision approval, not any site plan. If, in fact, the, uh, the ARB sequence has changed. We cannot approve anything if that is not done. But we will still have 
the public hearing unless I'm advised by Council yeah. And, and again, look, so for all transparency, look, we would, of course, love to have subdivision approval Thursday night. If, if if this board doesn't approve this tonight, which we understand you may not, then we could have our public hearing on Thursday and we could still be on track to secure site plan and subdivision approval in August. Again, if your board then is, is, approves these amendments between now and the planning board's August meeting. So no matter what, we'll have our public hearing on Thursday. I think it remains to be determined whether we'll be positioned to get any kind of subdivision approval as soon as Thursday night. Okay, thank you. So the second change to the- Brad, excuse yes. me, Brad, before you move on, I'm not sure if members of the public have had an opportunity to ask any questions uh, on mm -hmm. this first point. Sure. So maybe just pause a minute and if anybody wants to be heard on that question. So then we'll need to pause the screen share so we can see the. I can see oh, you can see them? Okay. Thank you, Howard. It appears that there are no questions at this time, but um, well, there, Marissa, please alert us if any hands get raised. I see somebody's waving. <laughs> somebody's waving. <laughs> Yes, uh, Supervisor, this is Mark Citrin. Um, Hi, Mark. Please go ahead. Yes, I just have one question. And it really is for the benefit of the public so we fully understand this process. It is my understanding that the planning board and the architectural review board are the same, uh, and they simply are members wearing two hats. Is that true? That is true. Yeah. So when we're talking about uh, reversing the process, as it were, it will be the same members of the ARB slash planning board or vice versa who will be reviewing these proposals. It's just the reversal of the order. Is that correct? Correct. That is yeah. correct. Okay. Thank you very much. That was the only question I had. Although I think it's important to, the, the, the issue is that while it may be the same people with or without hats, the subject matter is different. And it's the, it's the scope of the particular review that's the issue here, if I understand correctly, Brad and Howard. Yeah, that's 100% correct. And uh, Mr. Citra, that's a good clarification. Yes, same, same body, different hats, different nights. I think you can proceed, Brad. All right. So the second change and the last change to the text of the special permit document itself relates to maintenance. And this is something that was not submitted to the town board previously that you're hearing this for the first time tonight. This came out of the planning board meeting last week and some follow-up conversations with Sean. A question was raised, what responsibility does the town have for the right-of-ways that will be dedicated to the town? And under the special permit, the way it's currently, again, drafted and approved, the answer is pretty much everything. And the question came up with the planning board, well, is that, does that make the most sense? And upon some further discussion, both internally and with Sean, while nothing is final or agreed to yet, there's some merit to the concept that the applicant, the private party, would maintain things like stormwater, landscaping, lighting, while the municipality would be responsible for asphalt, right, repairing the, the asphalt when there's cracks and curbing and sidewalk repair. So what we're proposing here, we don't need to agree upon how we kind of divvy up the maintenance at tonight or during this process. But what this change provides is that um, in the sentence that the last sentence of this paragraph, upon acceptance of dedication, town's responsible for maintenance of the road and all facilities and infrastructure in the right of way except as otherwise agreed between the town and applicant in a maintenance agreement or some other document that lays out who's responsible for what. So we're just carving out the ability for the applicant to work together with the town to enter into a maintenance agreement that more, with more specificity identifies which party is responsible for what maintenance within the right of way. And that's particular to the roads that would be under town jurisdiction, just to make it clear to people in the public. Exactly. Um, that there's most of the roads are maintained by HOA and uh, um, by the related and Lennar group yep. as 
as opposed to just those three roads, Quail Road, Bridal Trail, and Two Hill Road. I think it was somewhere around 13 miles of road, but I don't remember exactly. Well, you, you, you nailed it perfectly, Mr. Supervisor. So if I understand correctly, as it's currently written, that comma after right of way is a period and the, the part where we get to push some of this off onto you doesn't exist yet. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, yeah, so we look forward to the details of red and red. One question: um, part of Quail Road, or the end of Quail Road, if you will, uh, goes into the village of Slotesburg. Mm -hmm. Is the village of Slotesburg going to maintain that part, or will Tuxedo maintain? So the way it's contemplated is just like Tuxedo would. Slotesburg would maintain that portion of Quail Road that is dedicated to Slotesburg. Um, but subject again to any kind of you know agreement we reach with the village as to who maintains exactly what parts of the road and the road road right away. So you'll have separate discussions with that. Correct. And we do plan on submitting, just so everyone's aware, because it's come up now both in front of the town board and planning board. We expect to submit to Slotesburg next week to um, to be placed on an agenda sometime later this summer. Well, thank you for pointing out Article 6. Yep. So those are the two changes to the special permit document and no further questions on this. We'll jump right into uh, the road hierarchy and, and parking. That's great. Paul, you, Paul, you want to take it from here? Sure. Um, hello, everybody. Paul Milano with Art Howerton. Uh, good to talk to you all again tonight. Uh, as you know, we've been leading the master plan and um, and working as the design architects for the buildings within the commons. Um, so uh, then adding on to uh, what Brad laid out, uh, we identified as we were working through details of the engineering of the plan, uh, and looking ahead at uh, grading requirements for uh, the East Terrace neighborhood, we identified the need for a transitional section um, within Quail Road, which is being highlighted on the screen right now, um, which as you all heard me say in past presentations, uh, we have a story behind Quail Road as it starts at 17 and makes its way up through uh, uh, this sort of rising landscape and it's curvilinear, it's navigating grade, it's really running through a forest and then all of a sudden it starts to change and it's transitioning from a road through a very natural, sort of more rugged landscape to one that's beginning to approach community and ultimately become our main street. And so this section, which has the sort of green dash in it, which is, um, which is MR 56-26, is really seen as a, highlighted there, is really seen as a transition between that portion of quail, which is more of a, of a, of a road through a landscape and topography to one that is then ultimately becoming your main street. And in doing that, we've identified, uh, you know, a different right of way would give us uh, the ability to have sidewalks, but also navigate some of the grading that would be required in that area and would give us the ability uh, to position that sidewalk um, uh, as it would work best with regard to the, the, the local conditions. And then as we approach that, that curve and that turn and we get into our main street section, that's the section of quail that we've always had in the plan, um, which has uh, parking on both sides and it has street trees and, and planters uh, and sidewalks and then uh, our buildings, which either have in some cases ground floor residential, in some cases uh, ground floor commercial uses, but really functions as a pedestrian oriented uh, main street. Um, and then that transitions back again as one heads south to through the Slotesburg area uh, section of Quail Road and then back along to uh, Quail Road again. I'm uh, sorry, along to Highway 17 again. Um, and so we identified that need and it wasn't in the um, road hierarchy plan. It was also not in the smart code in table eight. So we made those corrections by uh, including that section uh, in the road hierarchy plan, and again in Table Eight, which is a uh, which is a table within the Smart Code. And then for the uh, local road, so that was on the public um, the public road hierarchy. On the local road hierarchy, as we were 
um, digging deeper into developing the uses within uh, the commons and, and really looking at how that uh, functioned on a day-to-day -day basis. We, um, we really started to look at the need for additional on-street parking. And as I've said in past meetings, I really am an advocate for on-street parking because it really does a lot to um, help make a place feel pedestrian. It, it, it gives a barrier between moving vehicles and moving people. Um, uh, it also provides convenient parking. I've sort of, when I was a younger uh, architect, I heard a, a speech given to me by a well-known tra uh, transportation engineer, and he said, the best design parking lot is a well-designed street, and it's something that stuck with me in my entire career. Um, and so we identified um, Lower Mountain Lake Road, that's the, the road there in orange, and uh, Cortland uh, Place, which is the road shown there in blue, uh, where we could, because of site conditions, those roads had parking on one side, and we were uh, able through our work with uh, our civil engineers, uh, identify how we could get parking on both sides, um, which we think will be incredibly useful, especially in times when there might be, let's say a meeting at the, at the meeting event uh, building, or there might be a farmer's market and the need for uh, additional parking um, uh, is present. This will give um, very convenient uh, parking, very close as, as one, as if you remember the distance between Lower Mountain Road and our town square is really only about a two or two and a half minute walk. So it's a very close um, distance that we're talking about. And so similarly, we uh, created two new uh, local road sections um, in the high road hierarchy plan, uh, LR 52-36, for Cortland and LR58-36 for Lower Mountain Road. Cortland is against a native area. And so we have a tighter right of way there. We don't have the same condition as we have when we have the, the streets up against the building. And so that's the difference between the two right of way sections. And Christina, do you wanna talk about parking? Sure. So, Christina Zolazi with Long and Engineering, um, site civil engineer. So, with parking, we went through and laid out uh, additional on site parking to accommodate the residences. We did a detailed parking analysis where we looked at the total provided parking um, and did not take Quail Road into consideration, given that uh, Quail Road would likely be used for the commercial businesses that are located along there. Um, we factored in the non-EV spaces. So when we came up with the total, we came up with a total of uh, 619 spaces. Uh, going through the zoning code calculations, the residents require 491. So we have a surplus of 129 spaces. Um, there was a question about the parking garage. The parking garage has essentially been incorporated into underneath building one. So there will be lower level parking there. Um, and then the floors will be above for the, the amenity uses. And Christina, can I add, there was a comment about, it appeared in some of the buildings that we had parking facing the, the street right of way. Anytime, like say for building 16 or in building 11 or in building 10, anytime you see parking that is against the uh, right of way, that's actually happening 10 feet below the right of way. It's a condition where the street is at a particular grade and the site is falling um, because of the natural grade of the site and how we're having to engineer the site. And so we took advantage of the, the fact that certain buildings ground floor is sitting 10 feet above the, the parking area. And so we can park completely under that building. There's never been an intent to have um, a sort of a street facing facade be uh, a parking facility. So it's always going to be below the, the pedestrian's line of sight. So I guess any questions so far on the new road designation to facilitate more on-street parking in the commons or the parking calculations that showed on this chart? So well, how many units are there that we're talking about in this commons. I thought, I mean, we allowed for up to 500. How many are actually going to be built? 
Oh, the plans. 327 and, units, yeah. yeah. How many, I'm sorry? 327. Only 327 multifamily. Is that right? Correct. Correct. That's in this first four building build out or ever? In this current plan for the commons, 327 units. Okay. That's all the buildings that you're showing on this plan. Correct. And they'll have- So even- I'm Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, Deidre. Uh, so even though we allowed for up to 500 multifamily, you're not, you don't, you're not planning there, on building 500? There could be additional multifamily in Upland Terrace as we've shown in past presentations, that would be included in the 500. Okay, so the parking doesn't, it, it's not, we don't need to worry about- it, That would be parking. in a different neighborhood, in a different, in right. Upland Terrace neighborhood, yeah. So I'm sorry, what is the number? <laughs> How many units? 327. 327. Could you explain the thinking behind EV spots counting as two? Well, that was a provision in the SMART code. Um, that was, was my understanding is the original intent of that was to encourage more EV spots and to encourage EV car ownership. Uh, that I, I mean, understand. That I yeah. understand. It actually, uh, so the ratio per unit to parking spaces, I think I've heard a ratio of 1.5. Uh, is that the number? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the 491, does that include EVs or no? We're, you're taking that out. You're not using that multiplier. Yeah. No, the 491 is what's required by code of one and a half spaces per unit. So that's what's required. The but you're not cost. using the multiplier for EV to get to that number. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, there's no credit for EV spaces. Okay. And what about tandem spaces? Tandem spaces are in those locations where we have the ability to park under the full footprint because of a grade change, such as I just talked about. And then to traditionally, those would be offered to the same unit owner. So then if some people are gonna get two spots, does that count as one or two, the tandem? It would count as two. You would typically offer those to the larger units. Any tandem are you anticipating? Wow. Approximately. I, I... I wouldn't want to give you the wrong number, so I'll I'll count and get back to you. Okay, thanks. So if some people are going to get two, then that kind of means some people will get one, and <laughs> right? Oh, it it's expected that the larger units are going to have larger families and more cars, right? A That's the traditional like, thinking. Right, a tandem unit is like parking in your driveway, where you know you get to argue who gets to go out and move the cars in the well. That's the point. Who wants that? Well. That's the way it works. Yeah. So we the work on a number of, I will add on a number of projects. Paul, I'm sorry. The, the 491 spots, uh, is that including the street parking? No, um, the 491 is what's required by code. So we are providing, so there's 103 spots on Quail Road. We are not taking those into consideration. 
There is 722 non-EV parking spaces. So when you subtract off the 103 amp bell route, we have 619 parking spots available for residents to use. So with the 491, it leaves a surplus of the 129 parking spaces. So we have extra parking spaces for residences, which would also accommodate like snow storage if things are like that are occurring. How many of that 619 are on the street? 130 some. 103 are on Quail Road on street. Um, I, I don't but you're not. Down. I don't have the breakdown for specifically Cortland Place or Lower Mountain Road, but. So there'll be on street parking for residents. Yes, excluding Quail Road, which would be more towards um, transient commercial. Well, I, I think this is dramatically improving what the original plan was, no? In the number of spaces? We're not losing spaces, we're gaining no, spaces. We're gaining no. spaces. Substantially. And from, what I, from the meetings I've seen, uh, this is by placing spaces under the buildings. If I was a resident there, that's what I'd be looking for, a space where I don't have to carry my groceries out in the open weather and have a spot that's designated to my unit. So uh, as I've been following this, this has been improving the product, not degrading it. And parking spaces under buildings means that you don't have to have parking lots next to buildings. Exactly, it's not visible. Uh, right. It's better for the residents, um, have protected parking. It's uh, also in areas that the transient people who would be coming to the commercial uh, entities on the quote unquote main street wouldn't be parking in there. And then when they go home, uh, that parking is also available to the residents. So uh, can, um, so all of the 419 spaces for residents are under buildings protected? No, no. Uh, this, this chart is breaking down what's required and then what's being provided is showing below that. Uh, so the first, the first section is residential and then there's commercial and those are just calculations based on number of units or square footage of what would be required. And then everything below that is what's being provided. So that's the difference between where you're seeing the 491 versus other numbers. Okay. But to answer your question, seating. Michelle, no, there's not all of the residential parking is under buildings. Some of it is. So I guess I'm just trying to understand how many are on the street, how many are uh, not protected, just out in the, uh, like you're still showing parking in between the buildings, right? Those I assume are mm -hmm. uh, in the calculation of the 419, but yeah, exactly yes. those. So on, beyond the, the open exposed parking is part of the 419. It's So what you're seeing on the plan is we took counts from all the available parking, Portland Place, Lower Mountain Lake Road, behind the buildings, under the buildings, Quail Road, all the streets where we have parking, that's where we're getting the the on the provided parking, um, the 491 uh, is what's required by code and we're providing 619 by not factoring in the EV spaces or what's on Quail Road specifically. Okay. At some point in time, I'd like to know how much of the parking is the under parking. I, I think that should be relatively Can John uh, use a microphone, please? Oh, you didn't hear that. I'd, I'd like to uh, know what the, uh, the under building parking count is at some point. It should be relatively easy to calculate, I would think. And including the, the building one under grade parking also. And, 
and while we're talking about the the uh, underbuilding parking, I assume that's below grade. Christina. No. Yes. It, well, it depends on what you mean by below grade. It's as I mentioned in previous uh, presentations, there is a 20 foot grade change between Lower Mountain Road and Bright Old Trail Road. And how we're managing that is that our parking lots, which everything has a slight slope to it, but we're trying to minimize the grade change within these donut, donuts of the buildings. And so between Lower Mountain uh, Lake Road and the parking lot behind the buildings facing Lower Mountain Lake Road, there's about a 10 foot grade change. So we're using the building as the retaining wall and we're actually parking under the building. So from the perspective of the person parking, they're parking at grade. It's just that the grade of Lower Mountain Lake Road is 10 feet higher. Do you have a drawing for that, Paul? We show it, um, you see it illustratively in, in some of the sections that we showed, which we're about to pull up. Oh, okay, good. This is like having a, a house where your where your front door is at grade and you have a walkout basement with a garage door in it, just bigger. That would be mine. That's right. So if I'm standing in the parking lot that's in the middle of the donut and I look at the parking that's uh, under the buildings, it's at the same grade that I'm on. Okay. Yeah. And then just to further the requirement of, you know, the, the special permit and then the exhibits to the special permit, this is the update that would be required in table eight of the SMART code for the thorough, thoroughfare assemblies, highlighting the three uh, new road types that we're adding. The one that's related to Quail Road, which is the MR5626. The one related to Cortland Place, which is LR5236. And then the one related to Lower Mountain Lake Road, which is LR5836. And there is room to put these wider arrangements in without interfering with wetland buffers and all that stuff? Yes. Yes, we went through that analysis uh, as part of this exercise. So adding uh, one, one side of parking, I think is, is that one model there where it's just adding one side parking or are they all both sides? Cortland and Lower Mountain Lake Road yeah. uh, had parking on one side and what this is doing is enabling the parking on the other side as well. And how, far, how much does that widen the street? by eight feet. And part of the concern that's been discussed at these planning meetings had to do with snow removal. Uh, could you address how that's being mitigated? Christina, do you want to take that one? Sure. So we we're showing areas where uh, snow storage can be placed. Um, as noted, we have 129 additional parking spaces that could be easily used uh, to store snow. We show locations on the plan, other areas. Um, there may have to be an agreement between the town and the HOA regarding uh, where to locate snow, especially if it's off of Quail Road um, for temporary stockpiling. But generally, we have adequate parking to accommodate um, our residences during the, the event of a snow. Uh, storm. So how many spaces are going to be taken up by snow storage? Are you predicting? Um, we did predict, we did a detailed analysis uh, for that. We are using 47 spaces. Uh, and then as I noted, we have 129 that are extra. So 40%. And these are primarily spaces that are expected to be occupied by transients for the most part in the commercial zone? Correct. 
So obviously, if there's a snow emergency, they're not looking to stay in the commons. They're looking to get their ass home and so not have to deal with snow. But the question becomes, is there enough off-street, residential off-street parking in the event of a snow? Yes, there is. That, there is. On behind the buildings or on the other roads? Um, well, I mean, it's, we did not look at Quail Road when we looked at the snow storage, so we took that out of consideration because that was a concern. So in the areas that are private roads, they would be able to park and it's behind the buildings as well. We're going to pull up, I think, we, we have a snow storage plan. That, Ashley, is that what you're pulling up? I'm asking about storage. Yeah, I think Rob is talking about plowing. Mount maintenance and plowing. But I right. think it'll storage, storage. I'm not asking about. So right, Rob's wants to make sure that you guys can get all the resident cars off of our street so we can plow them. Gotcha. Yes, they are. So if we declare a snow emergency, cars cannot be parked there. Correct. So where do they go? Onto the That's private. Right. On, 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 yes. into, the, into the lots or onto the private streets that are not our problem to plow. There's right. somebody's problem, but they which still will have be to be a problem, plowed. Which yes, but they're not the town. Plowed. They're not going to be plowed by the town. The HOA will take care of that. But Rob could get the call, not the HOA, or the police department could get the call. Right. Somebody said at one of the meetings, even though it would be a private issue, it becomes a town issue. A public issue, absolutely. A public issue. And if it didn't end the first storm, it would hit the second storm and it would be Make right here. And it would be right here screaming with pitchforks and torches. So it would be beneficial to have some kind of detail of a, of a snow emergency parking Wait, plan right parking plan right. parking and towing plan just to go forward just so we all have a comfort level that this has been flushed out can we get that christina i assume that's something we could further explore yeah i mean that's, that's something we can further explore i mean i know yeah. it was discussed during the meetings um and, as and well that's yeah, I think that's exactly. I mean, look, the snow storage has come up during planning board review, and and, and respectfully, I think that's that that's a quintessential sort of site plan comment that we could advance with the planning board. And Rob, but doesn't that yeah. also go to what we have to approve? You know, what is what are the waivers? for the planning board and what needs to be approved by the town board. Because if it falls on the town responsibility, then the town board needs to be involved with that decision making, it seems to me. Well, I think we can go back and look at it, but I also don't think that that, that item is part of I mean, not making light of the issues of snow removal and, and traffic control, but though these are not changes that are being asked for to the in the current revision, the current modifications to the special permit. I think this is this is part of this ongoing process that as we're moving through the actual development of this plan, we're we're finding things that maybe weren't considered or the answers we thought of when we were putting it together may not be completely correct. I don't really think that's germane to the discussion that we're having this evening. Well, I guess my question is, where's the line between what uh, waivers the planning board can approve and what are changes to the special permit that the town board needs to approve? That's my question. Where is that line? Well, but does this even require a waiver? Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. I think that, I mean, I think that, 
I mean, I don't really remember, but I don't think that we ever discussed snow removal as part of the modifications to the special permit when we were discussing it. No, I guess my only concern is, you know, as I, if I understood what Rob was saying, at some point, you know, on paper, maybe it's not the town's responsibility, but if it becomes a problem for the residents, then it becomes a problem for the town. I don't Maybe I didn't understand what he was yeah. saying. And, and Michelle, I, I think to answer your question, I think these are fall within the ambit of site plan review. And yes, Rob would have a chance to look at it just like, you know, fire truck access and safety. So all the different town departments review the site plans to make sure that they're, that they're functional. And questions like this, what happens during a snowstorm is site planned. It's not related to any of the requests we're making to change the special permit, right? To, to dial it back to what we're asking for with respect to the road classification is to allow parking on both sides of the road within the commons to allow for additional parking. That's, okay. that's the extent of the request of the town board. While we're talking about private roads, public roads, uh, our police chief just had to leave, but a thought that I had, is there an expectation that the private roads will have coverage and routine patrols by the town police or just the public roads? Maybe we can't get an answer tonight, but it's something to think about. I don't know if there's any, in any discussion of that prior. Well, it depends if you're talking about writing traffic citations or whether there's a, a, a you know, police matter in in a in a residence. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think I'm talking more routine, just drive through once patrolling. I, I'd be talking off the top of my head, but this is part of tuxedo, and you know, other than. I mean, not they, having... ride, they ride through the woodland. Yeah, they do. Yeah, at our request, though. Uh, we did request it, probably. Not every day, but just... No, no, day. just, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, those sorts of things tend to be HOA town arrangements. Yeah. Right. That's my point. The HOA did reach out to the right. town uh, police department and ask them to do periodic patrols. And they do. I think... I think we have to stay focused on what this uh, yeah. the issues that related has come to us to change tonight because yeah. So do you want to continue, Brad? Yeah. So let's Ashley, if you could if you could zoom in. I think before we leave this slide, a couple of questions came up about footnotes um, seven and eight. You can sort of zoom in. These, these are. So let's talk about both these footnotes for a moment, because th these appear on each of the thoroughfare assemblies within the smart code. So I don't know, Ashley or Paul, when do you want to take these? But I think let, let's have a short explanation of the, of the meaning of these two footnotes. Sure. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, the, the first note about the planning board authorized to waive the requirement of the installation of a sidewalk was really for when we looked at the, um, the various street assemblies, we realized that in some cases there might, but might not be uh, the desire or the need to provide a sidewalk if we were up against a natural condition that where there was steep grades um, where installing a sidewalk would would either be uh, you know a heroic uh, feat of grading or would actually not allow someone to go anywhere it would not connect them to something um, and so uh, in doing that we felt that there was value in having the ability to uh, petition the planning board and, and explaining a situation on a case-by-case -case basis and um, showing them the conditions showing them uh, the rationale for that and then allowing them to make the decision. Um, on the second case, uh, point eight, that uh, major roads pass through any transect assignment, um, that was really a reconciliation of how we um, saw the plan and the, and the uh, regulating plan 
and how the major roads um, uh, connect through all the various uh, neighborhoods. And, and they sometimes go through natural areas. They sometimes go through neighborhood areas. And yet the, um, the designation of the major roads uh, didn't necessarily always address the various uh, transit zones. And so because of the, the function of the major roads and because of the way they're um, depicted in the regulating plan, we felt that this was the simplest way to, to just sort of reconcile those two conditions and say that major roads may pass through any transect zone, which is how they're depicted and have been depicted in the regulating plan uh, since at least 2015. Um, and it's just a reconciliation of that. I'm sorry, what's it, I mean, I, the major roads pass, they go where they go, their neighborhoods are around them. Is That's there, correct. Is there somehow an issue with certain road types are not allowed in particular transects or something like that? I mean, what, yes, I don't see where certain, the conflict is. Certain road types. So every road type has a transect zone assignment. Um, and so major roads, I don't, I don't off the top of my head, remember what the transect zone assignment was. Um, uh, so we're on that side, right? So but there are area, there are cases where we might go through a T1 zone, for example, which isn't listed here. Um, and so to avoid any future confusion as other, you know, as groups are reviewing this, because we'll have, you know, uh, you know, phases that will continue on for many, many years of this development so that there's no more future, so that there's no future confusion on what does it mean? We felt that there was, um, uh, the need to just add that note so that it was clear that a major road can pass through any transect zone. So if I can make up a ridiculous example, it might be the case that Quail Road would go through a transect that only allowed hiking trails and we'd still wanna be able to put that road through there. I didn't hear what you said, but uh, that would only allow what? So that you would, it would only go through a transect that would only allow, you know, gravel bridle oh, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. yes um, yes so so something something of that nature where um because these these transect zone assignments are really about the major intent for those roads but major roads are different because they're the sort of connectors through the entire property and so they they find themselves um connected to all of the transect zones that we have. In fact, sometimes there's a transect zone on one side of the road and a different transect zone on the other side of the road. Uh, and we need that because we need the road to, to function through the community. So that's it's a reconciliation of that condition. And is it, is it really a reflection of the fact that the road layouts have been established for these major roads already? And it's just reflecting that the transit zones around the major roads are going to vary in some cases right. more varied than the existing chart. That's that's a, probably a better way of putting it, Howard. Yes. So I mean, basically, the transect zones to define density and building type and that sort of thing, right? It's okay. center city out to the mm -hmm. boondocks, and the major roads go where they go. Correct. Right. But in the charts. The major road is listed as only being in, is it listed in being possibly every transect. transect? It's only that that road type is only shown in some of the transects in the in the list. That's correct. Uh, so this says the major roads, this is like the major like, roads are the major roads. The major roads are right, it's it like connect with everything. It's like the throughway. It, okay. it, the throughway doesn't care what your local zoning is about how big the roads can be. It's going where it's going. Okay. Okay. And it's necessary to connect all of these things. Yeah, and I, get I, them all out to Route 17. The, you know what it meant. That okay. one's that one's kind of bookkeeping. The other one about sidewalks. I think one of the concerns that we have is this sort of it doesn't connect to anything idea, like you know Route 17, which doesn't have a sidewalk on it yet. So. Yeah, and the plan had always been connectivity, and that was a major portion of the the overall comprehensive plan and plan of this development was the connectivity from neighborhood to neighborhood and ultimately to the hamlet. Right. So I guess my question is, when you say it doesn't connect, what are you, what are you thinking of there? 
Well, there may be there may be a condition on the site where grading makes it uh, nearly impossible or impossible to provide a safe uh, sidewalk within the right of way. And re remember, this is within we're now talking about uh, thoroughfare assemblies. So this is what happens within the right of way. Um, there may be conditions on the site where we have a trail, which is something that someone can walk on, but it veers from the right of, right of way because it uh, is safer to do so. And therefore, it would not be in the uh, thoroughfare assembly. But it would be, but a, but a walkway would be provided that does connect the neighborhoods throughout the development, despite the fact that it may not be a sidewalk along the right of way. That's right. And we've shown, you know, we've shown a number of trail connectivity maps in previous planning uh, presentations, and the intent is to find as many safe places within the site to accommodate, uh, you know, uh, pedestrian activity. And some of that is, is off street trails, which we think also distinguishes this development as being something that's very nature forward, something that's going to attract people to come here and just go for hikes. And that's something that would be presented to the planning board at the same time this waiver would be sought. Planning board. I, I, again, I, I guess I'm thinking that, you know, it's such a goal of the town board to have connectivity that I, I think that that question of sidewalks, eliminating them or not, you know, or changing would have to come, I feel it should come back to the town board. That shouldn't be a new waiver for the planning board except the planning board is going to have a better understanding of the of the overall detail detail and and the and the site conditions that are going to you know that are that are driving this request and i think that that also and i'm not casting aspersions on anybody but we ain't going to be around forever which is why it's so important to make sure that the objectives are not changed and the objectives yeah. of connectivity are, are what right i'm just you know but, i mean trails or sidewalks i i just want to make sure that connectivity is remains a major goal of the development i agree but i think that uh, this isn't a question of major goal this is a question of 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 particular modifications yeah. of, you know, on a street by street basis, basically. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I really feel it has, it's too much connected with goals of the town that I don't think it's a, it's would have to be added as in this, in whichever code, smart codes, special permit, as a waiver that the planning board can approve. And I just think it should come back to the town board. I, okay, I mean, I think, the, I think the planning board takes its marching orders from the town board for the most part. They're, they're the vehicle that enforces these, these over these larger conceptual desires. I don't have a problem if you guys want to retain that right. It's fine by me. Okay. Can't speak for everybody on board, but okay. well, and I think that I mean I don't know if you I'm sure you saw some of uh, Bonnie Franzen's um, uh, notes. I mean, as long as things are connected, it doesn't necessarily have to be that one specific um, sidewalk. If the sidewalk is not going to be a possible or easy to use or whatever. But I think that, um, you know, as long as there's other ways for a tuxedo farms to connect within it itself, but also within the town, mm -hmm. um, I think that's important. And I think, you know, as long as it's, it happens in some way, then, you know. I, I think one thing to remember also is the people who move in there are gonna, 
be vocal about what they need as well, uh, based on actual usage and demand. Um, I don't think we're agreeing to not have these built. It's it's to be able to review it on a case by case basis, uh, if I'm understanding it correctly. Uh, Which is why I think it's maybe it's better placed in the planning board because you guys are doing the small, you know. I mean, as long as the goal is connect connectivity, I think that this this the smaller steps might be you guys planning board might be in a better place to make those you know decisions. Can you read the point aloud again? Sorry, I can't read it. Point eight. Sure, it says um, future future publicly owned major roads may pass. Oh, sorry, you said number seven. Um, and actually, just just expand it if you can. Just zoom in. Yep. If you can. I will Thank zoom you. in. So the planning board is hereby authorized during its site plan and or subdivision review to waive any requirement related to the installation of a sidewalk on a case by case basis due to unique site considerations, accessibility, and safety. And we, and we were careful to add in that, that language at the end, and it kind of builds from the waiver language that's already authorized in the smart code, that uniqueness. And right. again, site factors, accessibility, safety. So it, it can't be you know, an, an arbitrary waiver. It's gotta be based on techni a technical basis for, for granting it. It's not for mere convenience. It's not convenient. Right. And, the, and as Paul was mentioning before, I mean, it, there is the possibility that there could be a sidewalk or path that's very close to where the original sidewalk was planned to be, but would be outside of the right of way. So that's something that would be considered in conjunction with this, with this request. I, I think that's what one of the things that bon, Bonnie Franzen had suggested um, in her comments. To you guys. Yeah. And, if, and if those comments had come up during the course of a request to the planning board for this kind of a waiver, I think we would, I guess, I think it's outside of tonight's discussion, but we would demonstrate that there's not room and, and given topography and slopes that that couldn't be accommodated. But again, we would demonstrate that at the time of the waiver request. But so, also but, offer alternative means of connecting the, the neighborhood. Yeah, and, and, and that, that and the planning board would ask all those same questions and, and we would have to reach a, you know, an acceptable solution to everyone. That might actually move things forward. Yes. I just have a point of order. There's, there's someone or some ones, I don't know, in the virtual audience who's got an open mic and some other conversation going on in the back room. And for those of us who are listen to too much rock and roll it's hard to hear what's going on so if you ain't talking mute yourself please i i would just like to point out uh, to my understanding we're not offering any waiver here just the ability for the planning board to consider uh based on topography actual conditions in the future uh Actually, every planning board up meeting I've gone to, they're the most considerate bunch. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty confident that they're not going to leave any stone unturned when, when a waiver comes in. And uh, uh, so I'm comfortable. With this. And look, and we want walkability connectivity as well. We're not, we're not looking to avoid that only when just site constraints make it not practicable. And then you look for alternatives that exactly. are practical. Yeah. And I think that this is exactly the kind of site plan issue that the site that the planning board exists for. They they have better knowledge of the conditions, all the rest of it. Look, and if you want to add at the end after end safety, you know, so due to unique site considerations, accessibility and safety, and having considered all reasonable alternatives. Yes, I do. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's move on to uh, balconies, if that's, if that's okay with the town board. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so when we were reviewing the um, 
uh, exhibits to the special permit, um, uh, the Hart Howerton team actually felt that it would be helpful to include balconies as part of the facade articulation requirement of the of the uh, 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 design guidelines. Um, and so we wanted to show you two examples of how on the top you have uh, stacks balconies um, that are shown here. And then on, below that is a bay window. This comes out of some analysis that uh, Related had, um, had done with regard to uh, you know, residential preferences, looking at other residential uh, developments within the within sort of an hour's distance or so of, of tuxedo and seeing that um, uh, that each of the units has some outdoor space. So in our review of the uh, plans that we had uh, uh, shown you preliminarily last year, we went through and said we could, we'll, we'll provide an outdoor space for every unit typically off of a kitchen, living, dining, you know, uh, zone within the, within the unit plan. And so in some cases where we're showing, for example, a bay window, uh, if you go 90 degrees from that bay window, there's actually a stack balcony. So, um, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's some, in some cases we're able to do two things. Uh, we were able to provide both and other, in other uh, conditions, we're able to buy, provide one of those, but the, but the, but architecturally, it really does achieve uh, very much the same thing. It pr provides a relief on the facade. We, you know, recognize that this is an architecture that does not want to have, you know, relentless flat design, flat facades. So we have modulation within the within the facade. We have these forward-facing gables, as you see, and then even within that, we are developing patterns within the facade that will show stacked balconies and what we're saying would be would encompass would encompass at least two two levels of the building um, that would uh, would uh, essentially create these vertical patterns that have uh, movement so that as you're moving by the building as you're sort of walking by the building you're starting to see projections and other uh, in some cases even recesses and projections which are creating massing changes which help to break up uh, these buildings and make them more vertical, which is something that we desire from a proportioning system that we want these buildings to, uh, you know, read ver more vertically than they do horizontally. My only comment, which echoes something that Bonnie brought up, and not to cast any aspersions on our neighbors to the south, but if you drive through Slotesburg, and you see people using their balconies as storage yards. So can you can you put a line in the HOA rules that says you can't store stuff on your balcony? That's not in our program. I know, but I'm asking anyway. I want to know how deep are these how deep are these balconies? Because I can't read. Uh, so in the particular case of the balconies we're showing you, they're they're inset two feet and they're projected four feet so that the usable space on the balcony is six feet. Two by four. No, two. It's six feet from the window to the rail. Oh, okay. Two six feet of feet that. Deep. Two feet of that is inset within the unit, and four feet of that is outside of the uh, outside okay. of the volume. So, um, and that has to do with that was partially through the, the review with the structural engineer of how much we could cantilever outside of the building. So if we wanted to, we could do a four foot balcony, but a four foot balcony is less usable than a six foot balcony. So we, we did it in a different way. Me personally, if I was looking to get an apartment there, I'd want one with a balcony mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I just want to make sure it's usable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like no, I know what you mean. Those yeah. little two free yeah, balconies. Yeah, like, looks good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure it looks good. Yeah. No, no, I know what you mean. Exactly. And again, that those are issues that the A, actually, the, not the planning board, put your other hat on, John. The, the, the ARB will yeah. be looking at yep. Yeah. Yeah, the way it was, um, I had questions the way it was presented, you know, the bay windows or stack balconies. But now that I see the plan you have, it makes more sense to me. Because I didn't know if that meant you could do away with bay windows and only put in stacked 
balconies the way it was written and presented. So is it, so what you would do is something along the lines of what you're presenting here. It would be, say, uh, you know, a balcony on top of bay windows. You would still have it's, bay windows. The, so these are these are in fact buildings that we're that we're we submitted for the first phase. So on top is building five or portion of building five. On bottom is one of the facades of building fourteen. And building five is showing a utilization of stacked balconies. Building fourteen is showing utilization of bay windows. Um, the, again, the goal was to try to get outdoor space for every unit or almost every unit or every unit to the to the degree possible. Um, but as architects, we love bay windows as well. And, um, and so as we go through the, uh, various building designs and building plans, um, you know, our, we're trying to achieve both of those, um, uh, features within the plan. Um, uh, but it, it's going to be on a case by case basis, uh, what, what can be provided. But I think that the effect of the stacked balconies is no less than the bay windows. It's one has one has more depth to it. You'll see a lot of shadow at night that'll be glowing like a lantern. Um, uh, and I'm referring to the balconies in that case um, versus one that will sort of be, you know, uh, more of a kind of projected window form. But they'll both they'll both be very striking uh, features on the facade. Well, Paul, they wouldn't exist in the same building if that, if that, if that was the question. Is they that... could they could exist on the same building. I mean, on 14, you've got balconies on the left side and the bay window on the right side. Um, but that's because we we turned the corner and provided the balcony on the on the side that you're not we're not seeing. But I mean, again, that's a that's just based on the conditions of each building. Uh, me personally, I think it's an added plus. I think you need to get these first buildings right and get uh, full occupancy and uh, the vistas that somebody would see from that balcony, I'm sure will be stunning and yep. will only help to sell it. Yep. Are we ready to move on to plant lists? Yeah. Yes, please. All right, so oh, this every damn plant in life. <laughs> right. So this one should be pretty straightforward. So these were plant lists that were previously approved in 2015 and were inadvertently left out in the final document. So we're just proposing to add them back in. They were they were lists that were already reviewed. Uh, and this is literally a screenshot of of the previous yeah, approval. I remember that. Really, I remember when, when we packaged it together, we left out a sheet. That, that's all it comes uh, We left out a couple right. sheets, but yes. And, yeah. and I would point out that the sheets that were included, we didn't change the lists. No. We, we right. just took them and yeah, moved them forward. Them up and so, moved them, yeah. right. So, right. I will point out that, that that Orange County Planning Board has reviewed this um, proposed modification, and their response was that this didn't offer any any impact on any other community, so it's a it's a community uh, matter of local concern. Well, thank local you, determination. local determination. Thank you. And then they added a list of plants that to remind us that we should be using native species, um, <laughs> which we are. So that's good. Well, I guess my. As My the, question was, um, in tw this was from 2015, but then we went through a whole review last year and decided to focus only on native, uh, drought resistant, non-invasive species. So that's why I don't know why we're going back to 2015 when it's the same we list. reviewed the list. We didn't change the list. The list that was used last year was carried was carried also carried forward from 2015. If my recollection is right, there's also a list of prohibited plants. Actually. Yes, there is. Okay. And there are eight or nine additional pages of, of uh, acceptable plants, correct? That's in correct. the uh, special permit. In addition to this one. Right. right. This was a representative missing page. Right. This 
this doesn't change anything from what was approved. It just puts the pages back in the other section where they're where they're where they need to be. Okay. So. So then the next section that we're proposing to change is in the performance standards, adding some additional pavement types. Uh, this was in consultation with our site manager and he's been speaking with various uh, asphalt contractors and this is what they are re recommending at this point in time for the soil conditions on this site. Um, these um, recommendations were reviewed by the town engineer and he uh, agreed with them in his memo. Yeah. Any questions on this one? No. Not being a road engineer, no. But I did review Sean's memo, and and I'm com comfortable with his review. Okay. Um, so, as we were kind of hitting on earlier, there are uh, there were some comments in some of the the memorandums about changes to the plan from what was reviewed by the town board back in 2022. So we just wanted to point out, this is the plan that was approved in 2022. It's the overall land development plan. Um, and this is a zoom in of the commons area, which was a, an inset. So this is the preliminary plan from the special permit. And as was shown at that point in time, some of these buildings were shown as, as connected with some bridges and what we're showing today, and Paul can speak more to some of the details here, is consistent with that. We've got some underpasses in, in like building five, as well as in building 10 and building 12. Right. Right, but, right. so one, one of the comments was that those, those connections weren't previously approved, but we just wanted to, without going through every single comment, this was one that we wanted to highlight to the board. Um, it was right front and center in the memo. We want to just point out that it was previously shown with these connections between buildings. Right. And this is part of an architectural tradition, you know, in the Hudson Valley, especially with uh, Tudor architecture, um, where there's an opportunity to do a gateway arch. Uh, it's a special moment. It's something that really becomes what we call in the urban design world a gift to the street it's a it's something unexpected it's something that doesn't happen uh all the time it happens in a special place in a special moment um i think it will be we it will be very charming i think people will be very much um uh appreciative of it architecturally and and as you see though we're still very much uh, being attentive to the massing of these buildings and having them read uh, like individual buildings that are connected through connector pieces, not just, you know, the whole thing just moves across. I remember having this conversation when we looked at the other, the, some of the Lennar things that looked like, you know, just a super long building, but I don't think that this is what that is. I, I, obviously, your, your elevations are, continue to take shape. Uh, before, we just saw boxes and, and very conceptual drawings, and this continues to emerge. Uh, um, I'm impressed with the way the plan keep, continues to grow, personally. The, the level of detail that's shown on these elevations that you're seeing right now are the, is the level of detail that we're proposing be the conceptual review by the ARB. So this is more detail than what the town board had looked at previously. But as you can see, there aren't materials specified, but you get a good idea of how these buildings are going to fit within the landscape, how they're going to feel uh, and what the neighborhood is going to feel like. So this is what we're proposing would be the conceptual level review. All right. 
Is there more? Uh, is that the last slide? Yeah, I think that. So there's just uh, so the other changes that um, I don't have a slide for. There were a couple minor text amendments to the smart code itself. Most of them were cleaning up some things that, um, like missing words or the numbers were a little bit off. And we did do we did add one definition of an alley uh, because it wasn't previously defined. There was only rear alley. And that's something we think we may need later on. Um, but that was everything else in there was pretty straightforward. I can bring up those. Um, I can bring up that PDF if that would be helpful. I, I looked at them and I don't. That, yeah. that stuff so didn't bother me one bit. Yeah. Housekeeping. Yep. So, so, so a question to our attorney Howard. Uh, do we still need to see? Go ahead. I think that, I mean, ask Howard a question. We're still technically in the public hearing. Right. I'd like to have a That's chance to collapse down the presentation so we can actually see, see the if public. there's anybody left in yeah. the public watching this and, and see for ourselves if anybody has questions. I know Nanolin. I know who that is. <laughs> And then I guess while, while we'll do that two minutes of dwell time while people contemplate their questions and put their hands up, Ken, what are you going to ask Howard something? Well, Howard, uh, you know, we, we're still having the public hearing, anticipating we're closing it shortly if there are no questions or comments. Um, in our packet, we don't have a resolution specifically to consider this evening, and I just wanted to check in with you on that. I had uh, sent you a proposed one a little earlier, uh, but I don't think you've had a chance to look at yeah, it. I haven't had a chance to read uh, it. But um, I could read you a resolution if you wanted. Okay. You can uh, consider. Let, me, let me make sure that uh, public comment is closed and oh, we, have, we have to vote there on, but is there anyone else in the audience? No? No comment. no comment. Okay. So I'll make a motion to close public hearing. Yeah, we got an official form for that. It's on page three. Uh, Four. Okay. Uh, actually, we didn't ever. It's, I guess the question uh, do we have any reason to keep the public comment open? Well, I thought we had said we were going to uh, meet with our consultants before because well, we haven't that, had a chance to do that. Well, we, we heard from them. We heard from them and we read their, we got their comments and we heard the answers to them. Is there anything else that we need to talk to them about? Well, we've I, I suggested that because uh, um, Bonnie's comments came in over the weekend and uh, we all agreed to send them to related for a response. So uh, I'm comfortable with that process. Well, I, I think we asked a lot of questions. I'd like the answers to some of our questions. Which ones? Yeah. Well, the ones about the parking, the ones about snow removal, the ones about but the how many, how many parking, uh, how many parking is underneath, how many parking is on the street, some more detail on that. It, but unless that's not part of this resolution, that's, that's different. Well, we the, did ask a lot of questions. The, I'd like answers. The parking count, I, I agree we should get the answers. Yeah. Parking counts don't really go to this. This is a question about approving the order of changes and approving some additional on street parking that will only improve the parking situation. The question of whether the parking spaces are located in lots, in or not in built under buildings seems even less germane. To me, because the original approval never got into that right. specification. I mean, we've specified a number of required spaces they've and they've met it and exceeded it. And exceeded it. The question, I think the question of snow removal yeah, and storage snow. is important. But again, that's that's a site well, planning question. That's not a that doesn't really go to the to the. Well, I, I, let's hear here. the resolution and then we can then I can, you know. Well, we'd have to close the public hearing. We got to close the public hearing to oh, okay. do the resolution. So the question is, the real question with the closing the public hearing is, do we think that there's anything that was presented tonight that 
the public should be able to go away, think about, and provide comments to this hearing as opposed to written comments about that they can always submit. Well, we do have a raised hand. So oh, good. Is that Evelyn? Um, yes, it's me. Hi, good evening. Evelyn, how are you? How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Very good. I recognize <laughs> from, you. From the depths of far away. Okay, so the one thing, the parking is definitely uh, questionable. Question. Question in my head. If I were to move in there, um, I would want parking. I would want, you know, a park, parking garage. You buy a house, you, you know, it would be nice to have a place to put your car. Okay, that that's a definite question in my head the other thing is it wasn't really brought up is lighting the light the lighting system at the at the uh, parking for the train is really this old-fashioned kind of are they going to do that for the street lights and i know that's not being discussed and the other thing is the wattage of the big lights on the street i know um they were dimmed down because it was too bright. So, I mean, those are issues that came up when they did the lighting down. You know, you restored all the lighting, you redid something. So those are just things that I'm putting out there. But but the parking issue, from what I've been listening to, is still sort of unclear to me. That's all. Well, let me just tackle that for a second, uh, Evelyn. Okay. Uh, first okay. of all, any of the parking we're talking about is just in the commons. This is a project oh, okay. of many neighborhoods with totally different... Uh, situations. Uh, obviously, single family homes with two car garages uh, is not anything we're contemplating this evening. We're speaking very okay. specifically about a few buildings in what we call the commons. Uh, Got actually, it. the parking arrangements that are being presented here this evening are improvements over the plan that was approved earlier. And uh, so as far as the lighting goes, we're not even considering any of that this evening. Um, Got it. It's all planning board stuff, and uh, they're, a, they're a rigorous bunch. They're, they're going to make sure that Good. it's done right. Also, Good. The, okay. in the permit, we had uh, environmental you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir, yeah. We have guidelines yeah. for uh, dark sky we lighting. Dark sky light, light, um, yeah appropriate okay. for different conditions, street lights, okay. parking, okay. what homes are allowed to have. Okay. But and and you, the Evelyn. plant issue, uh, you're welcome. The, the, the plant issue, the plant issue that um, was brought up about drought plants, that is a big deal coming up with uh, the weather. I, I have feeling it's going to be changing. We're either getting one thing or the other, you know? So no, no anyway, and, uh, with those kind yeah. of plants, those are preferred because they require a hell of a lot less maintenance. And so, oh, okay. I don't think that's oh, something okay. people will be fighting over on that front. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. And I will continue listening as long as you're on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I was going to say, I think we've heard from the public and yeah, I think so. Um, I don't think opening the meeting further is going to increase that participation. We we specifically called out uh, related to represent tonight to make sure that people would have access to that. And, and we're talking about a very at the, now, we've, we've talked about a lot of stuff, but, but our our real purpose here today is a very narrow set of modifications. Right. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that all per persons wanting to be heard have been heard. Uh, and I'll make a motion to close the public meeting at, uh, excuse me, public hearing at 9.05 p.m. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Maria. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? No. So, um, so back to the resolution, Howard. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a copy in front of me. Uh, would you mind? I, I, can, I can go through it. <clears throat> okay, then uh, I'll have Howard go through it. Thank you. Right. I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to skip some of the preliminary 
language that you would find you know find in the resolution. But whereas uh, as a result of the planning board's ongoing review process of this uh, application, the applicant realized that certain additional minor amendments to the 2022 special permit are needed. And the amendments relate to number one, the sequencing of the planning board and architectural review board approval pursuant to article eight of the 2022 special permit and two, clarifying certain technical matters in the design standards appended to the 2022 special permit, including but not limited to updating table eight of the smart code to allow for additional on-street parking within the area known as the commons. And the applicant has submitted a request to the town board uh, for those proposed amendments. Uh, the town board believes the pro proposed amendments are minor in nature and should be classified as an unlisted action under seeker. That during the town board's review, the applicant has given to the town board the proposed amendments, a short environmental assessment form, uh, a 2023 seeker technical amendment, uh, which analyzes the proposed amendments and has demonstrated that no potential, potential significant adverse impacts to the project uh, that had not been previously studied and mitigated are presented. And the town board together with, with its planning consultant, the town engineer and the town attorney have reviewed all the materials. And the town board has considered the proposed amendment at its prior meeting and tonight following its public hearing and we had referred the proposed amendments to the uh, planning board and to the Orange County Planning Department, uh, both of whom have reported back to the town board, uh, indicating uh, in the case of the planning board that it's in favor of the proposed amendments and from the Orange County Planning Department indicating that uh, there are no uh, inter-county inter issues and that it is for the town board to decide. And now, therefore, the town board finds that the proposed amendments individually and cumulatively would not result in any new potential significant adverse impacts to the environment that had not been previously studied and had not been previously reviewed. The board finds no additional supplemental environmental review is required. Uh, that the town board's lead agency has determined that all procedural steps for seeker have been satisfied. The town board finds that the application for the proposed amendments satisfy the requirements of the grandfathered PID regulations insofar as they are minor amendments intended to clarify and refine certain procedural and technical design matters already approved. Be it further resolved, that simultaneously with the adoption of this resolution, the pages in the 2022 special permit, including the design standards, shall be substituted with the individual pages compro comprising the proposed amendments, subject to any non-material modifications that are deemed necessary or satis and satisfactory to the town board's council and the town board's consultants in coordination with the applicant and the resulting documents shall constitute the operative 2022 special permit and design standards for the project. And be it further resolved that as except as modified by this resolution, there are no other amendments or modifications to the 2022 special permit and all unchanged terms and conditions set forth in that 2022 special permit remain in full force and effect and be it further resolved, the town clerk shall file this resolution in its office and shall file a report of this action with the Orange County Planning Department within 30 days from the date of the adoption of this resolution. And be it further resolved that the resolution should take effect immediately. What he said. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to- uh, Can I ask a question first? Well, no, you gotta make a motion make first. A motion, okay. then you okay. can ask a question. I make a motion to uh, uh, for the town board to consider this resolution. Do I have a second? 
I'll second that. Seconded by Jay Reichcott. Um, Deidre Murphy, you had a comment, question? So Howard, uh, since I don't have the privilege of reading this, I just want to summarize from my own simplicity that we're really approving, based on this resolution, two items. One is the sequence of the process for approval for the planning board from site planning and ARB approval. So we're switching that, and that's, that's part of this resolution. And the second one is to add parking, uh, on-street parking. The those additional the on-street things. parking. And those are the only two things that we're, we're, we're approving. We're on, you know, the, what the else the are parking, we approving? The parking is, uh, has to do with uh, adding street hierarchy. But yes, it, uh, effectively it's, it adds it's parking to pages. some streets. Oh, okay. The other thing that we're approving is several. The stacked uh, balconies and the plants. The stacked balconies. The pavement types and the plants. Right, a bunch of a bunch of housekeeping the stuff as well. Plants. Okay. And also giving the planning board uh, authority to review sidewalks. Sidewalks. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to see the amendment to that sidewalk issue. Well, they're, they're, is that going to be in the is that going to be in the uh... that's on a case by case basis. So we're well, really no, actually, not... I requested that they add to the to that to that one amendment, which was item eight. Yes, that, it's right. item seven, actually. But yes, seven, the, the part you. about safety. Yeah, I just want to make sure that that's yeah, they're going to add that, though. Yep. They're going to add that. That'll be add add that, that word, the wordage, right? Yes. Yes, that'll be right. added. And, and what we'll do is we will attach the uh, the relevant pages with the changes to this resolution right. so that when the board gets the resolution and gets its minutes of this meeting, you will have an opportunity again to take a look and make sure that we've not omitted anything that you, um, you think is supposed to be in here nor added anything that you think or you, you, you later think we added that shouldn't be in, in here. And this is recorded, so everything is on record. Oh, I, I have a question, and actually, it may be against protocol, but I'm going to ask Brad, did we miss anything, or did you get what you need? Perfect. Thank you. Got what we need. John, did you hear anything that you have? I just have a question. If you approve this resolution, uh, it includes additional parking on the streets. Does that mean that the parking issue is locked down and the planning board cannot and cannot address it? Oh. No, no, it doesn't mean that at all. It's, it, it's the planning, it, it, this gives them the ability to put parking on the street, but you still have the ability to say, well, we don't think there should be, in, in this particular location, there should be any, or maybe you could make this, the spaces a little longer or a little shorter or put them over here. You know, it, it gives you the flexibility for your review. Right. Okay, so we can still review that. Oh, oh yeah, no, that all, my question. all we've done is added the additional config, street the configurations. for us to agree to it or not agree to it. Correct. Okay, I understand. And John, just for if it, for what it's worth, we I certainly concur with that explanation. Okay. Any further questions? No. Michelle, do you have any further questions? Uh, no, I would have liked to have had a little further review with our consultants, but obviously I want to this to move forward, so. No I just questions. wish we had had more time with uh, in-person meetings with our consultants so we could have had a little back and forth with them. I mean, yes, we got their emails, but that well, we got their reports, not just their emails. Yeah, we got their reports, I know. <laughs> but we didn't get a chance to yeah. sit down and have conversation and get all our questions answered. So that's why I didn't vote to to close the public hearing because I felt that that's necessary, but obviously it was approved, so. If there's no further comment, do a roll call vote. Jay Reichka? Aye. Ken English, aye. Maria May? Aye. 
Deirdre Murphy. Aye. Michelle Lindsay. Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have some real business to do now. Uh, okay. <laughs> Look, Greg and Dylan aren't here, but I'm sure they're jumping up and down on a plane somewhere. So I just want to say thank you to the board, Howard, to you and all the consultants. Really appreciate, again, once again, the diligence that you all went through during this process. So thank you. Well, well thank you. And, and uh, you know, I'm convinced that you guys are moving in the right direction. You know, we're really hoping for a really special commons area that will certainly set the tone for the rest of this project. Uh, it'll be the one part of this project that I think every resident in Tuxedo will take advantage of. And uh, we're really counting on you guys to get it right. So please keep up the work and continue I, to refine it. I have a question to the team, Brad. Uh, for Thursday night, uh, will it be virtual, virtual or will you, uh, any of you appear in person? I'm, I'm away. I can't appear either way. Ashley, I forget, are you coming personal? Hey. I was planning on attending in person. Okay, that's that's fine. Just let uh, Deborah know by yeah, Thursday morning. Which, uh, Would you prefer best. us to be virtual? I mean, no, I think it's best. Flexible. To be okay. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? No. Thank you very much, Brad. Right. Team. Good night, all. Thank you. Ashley, thank you. Thank Good you. night. Paul, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Um, thank you. You sound talking about it. Thank you. Agenda. I'm trying to remember how far We're we on got. Number three, I think. We approved the bid for the train station? Yeah. Yes. It seems eight. like. Eight. Page eight. eight. Thank yeah. you. Agenda number three resolution settling of tax return. Yeah. I can never say that word. <laughs> I say sociary, but Sir I could be totally wrong. I don't know. But I'm sticking with it. <laughs> um, Howard, so we're on uh, resolution settling the tax sociary. Um, uh, do you suggest I read the entire thing? Uh, no, I would just go right to the um, the the the. The where the last whereas and the resolution. Whereas I, you want me to do it? I, sure. I can I can jump in if you want. Um, I mean, yeah, just I just want everybody to understand a little bit of the background, you know. Yeah, uh, the these property owners had um, petitioned to challenge their tax assessment. And uh, following review of appraisals and uh, discussions with the our assessor, the assessor uh, determined that it's in the uh, town's best interest to uh, resolve the challenge by uh, an agreement. That agreement was executed uh, or, or implemented and developed with uh, the help of my office, Cara Cavallo. And so the recommendation is that the proceeding for the 2023, 2022-23 tax year be compromised and settled by the assessment being reduced from 690,000 to an assessment of 621,000 for a total reduction in the assessment of 69,000. And so there'll be an adjustment of that tax for 22, 23, both for the property taxes, the county and the school taxes. Correct. And uh, so now be it therefore resolved that the proposed settlement as set forth and described above is hereby accepted pursuant to uh, Article 68 of town law and is further Resolved that Jim Davies, assessor of the town of Tuxedo and Cara J. Cavallo, Esquire, on behalf of J and G Law LLP, be and they hereby are designated as the officers of the town who shall apply for such approval pursuant to the aforesaid section and law, and be it further on a motion by. Uh, oh, sure, make me the bad guy. It says council person. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Councilperson Jay Reichgat. Uh, well, I, and seconded by Councilperson Reimay. Uh, for the ongoing resolution was adopted. Uh, so no. The motion is open for discussion, for the discussion by the town board. Um, I don't have it. It's nope. procedural. Nope. Okay. Uh, no further comment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Michelle says aye. Michelle said aye. Unanimous. Okay, yes. let's move to item number four. Uh, resolution to authorize a bid package for the highway truck. So um, continuing to uh, improve our uh, procurement policies. And uh, so we asked Howard Prater to draw up this resolution to authorize a bid package for a highway truck. F-550 with the dump, salter, and plow. Whereas the town is in need of procuring a Ford F-550 truck with dumps, salter, and plow, and whereas the town board has caused a bid package and specification to be prepared, now therefore be it resolved that the town board approves the specifications and authorize the clerk to advertise for bids with a bid opening date set for Monday, July 10th at 12 p.m. Uh, do I have a second on that? I'll second. Okay, um, open for discussion, questions? This is just to bid, bid the truck out. Is this in addition to the one we already authorized? This is the one we already authorized. Oh, okay, so it's the there, same one. It's yeah, the same, it's the same one. one. The, the, the other one was supposed to have been pursuant to state bid, but apparently right. the, it, it wasn't, so we have to go uh, to the bid, actually. Okay, thanks. There's no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Agenda item number five, a resolution. This is a similar kind of a thing. Resolution to authorize a bid packet for police vehicle outfitting. Uh, whereas the town is in need of procuring police vehicle outfitting for two town vehicles. And whereas the town board has caused a bid package and specifications to be prepared. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board approves the specification, authorizes the clerk to advertise for bids with a pre-bid conference on Monday, July 10th, 2023 at 1 p.m. and bid opening date of Monday, July 17th, 2023 at 12 p.m. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Maria. It's open for the town board discussion. This again is uh, making our bid legal. Yep, the, the, all good. The, yeah. Okay, good. And we're using the exact specification that the uh, police chief and the lieutenant asked for to outfit the two cars that we purchased. All in favor? Aye. 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 Guess who's likely to win the bid? Item number six, a resolution to establish pay rates for summer camp employees. I'll make a motion, ask for a second in a moment that the town board of the town of Tuxedo hereby approves the pay rate schedule for the seasonal summer camp positions listed below. Uh, recreation aid. Uh, so let me explain a little please, bit. Please, go ahead. Um, okay, so well, what happened uh, is when we were trying to put together these positions, we realized that there wasn't anything in the town guidelines that had like, you know, I, I think prior people were like, oh, so it's so gets paid this or that or the other. It was like kind of haphazard. So now we made, we, we looked at uh, other municipalities and also we looked at New York State, the guidelines to operate summer camp to find out exactly what staffing we needed. And so we set up like a, a pay rate table so that going forward, People know if you're a first year uh, recreation aid, which is a counselor, you're gonna get paid minimum wage. For your second year, you're gonna get paid minimum wage plus uh, whatever rate of increase everybody else who is not uh, under the, the collective bargaining will get. So, uh, so it'll be like 2% or whatever. And so based on that, we created this table so th this table is really for future uh, retention of staff as right. part of the motivation right. here. So yes. this will basically go into the reorg when we're doing exactly. recreation department. Exactly. Piece. Yeah. As It'll opposed be... to the second and page, so, which is 
Okay. So yeah, the second page follows that as per the one year, you know, like the the people who were this is uh, establishing for twenty already. Yeah. So for example, the first person who's making twenty twenty dollars and sixty cents an hour, she, for example, is has been a, a, a recreation aide for five years. Plus, she has um, an extra uh, certification to substitute for the medical aid. Mm. So, okay. so that's you know. So, so anyway, so you know, all, all the other you can see like who is the first year recreation aid, recreation aid. To the ones that are more than fourteen twenty, you you see the fourteen sixty is the ones that have been here for two years. The same with the lifeguards and so on. So basically, we just wanted to, like we've been doing with everything else, I think we wanted to make it so that there was a system right. for this year and going forward for what we're going to pay people. And they know what their, you know, what their salary to be expected is if they work here. Also, it helps you retain people because they know next year they're going to make, you know, more. Cool. Howard Grace is now hmm? Howard. Howard, yes. Yeah, these aren't salary, just to be clear. Right. Hourly. Uh, yeah, right. hourly. Sorry. Uh, they're safe. not 1099, are they? No. Well, no, no I don't they're think They're seasonal. So. They're seasonal employees. Seasonal, seasonal what? Yeah. They're seasonal, seasonal employees. employees. Employees, yeah. Right. Yeah. The, but, so it says pay rate schedule. Right. Yes. They're, they're, not, they're not salaries from a legal and procedural oh, right, right, right. Sorry. Rate. Did I, did I, I use that okay. word? Yeah, I mean, use, I use pay rate. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Use those words. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah the, we, I use the word. Yeah. We use pay rate. I think. No, I your salary. Um, um, so we're going to. Wherever it says salary, it's going to be changed. The oh, I see. I see. Yeah. I see. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. Salary, salary. Send you that. I changed that. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah, okay, but all right. So now, are we? Do we have two resolutions here? One to approve this rate schedule one and to one to that approve and the one people. One to approve the people. Yeah. So that's the first resolution. Okay. While we're making typographical corrections, I think in the first one for recreation aid, it's current minimum wage, and the close parentheses is in the wrong spot. The parenthesis is that it's fourteen twenty in twenty twenty three, not that. Every year moving forward, this person starts at. Well, entry level person starts at. Oh, I wage. see, I see. Yeah. So, okay. I see. Well, this year, though, minimum wage because. This year it's 14. Yeah, but 20. that point should be on because the next they were. Page. Okay, so the yeah. reason is because last year's minimum wage was 1320 or something, but it got. It made what meant this year's is 420. Right. So, so that's why to... we had to change that. I understand. I understand. But, but next year, if it's. So. Yeah. Okay. It's it's pay rate. So we need to change just salary. Take this off. Can I make yeah, a recommendation that, that we? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. we can fix this quickly. Agenda item number six. We could tackle next week if we really. Yeah. Want why to. don't we? Yeah, why yeah, don't we, we table can... number six and and yeah. so we can correct up the table. All right. And so number seven. Um, six B. Six I make B. a motion. And I second. That and, the town board of the town of Tuxedo hereby appoints. The 2023 summer camp employees following Orange County civil service rules in New York State guidelines to operate a summer camp. Their job titles, names, and pay rates are listed below. And do we need? No, you don't need. We don't need to name. No. <laughs> okay. So. So everyone has that in front of us. <laughs> yeah. So you had a motion and it was seconded. So it's open to town board discussion. Any I don't discussion? have any. Yeah. I, these people have all been vetted in their. Yep. Okay. Good. Yeah. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Michelle says aye. Very good. All right. So we tabled the. Just I guess for Just number six, the 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 resolution for pay rate pay, pay rates. Just love all the stuff. Bring it back next. next yeah, time yeah, we'll bring it back. We'll change that. Yeah, we all just right. want to have something that from now on is is you know we have a rule for it. That's you know, makes that sense we can to follow. me. And that way we don't have to reinvent the wheel every year. Um, 
We definitely want to uh, continue moving forward talking about the short-term rental local. Um, it's 9.30. Well, I'm going to say the short-term, just, I think there was some confusion. At the last meeting, basically what we said was, Turn in your get, get comments to me and I'll, so I can have them and I'll sort of report on the status so that I can get a draft put together for next meeting. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't print them up, but I did. Take, take a deep breath. Them. Take a deep breath. Very good. Um, as of this morning, I've got comments from everybody except you, I have which is fine. And I was away dealing with family crisis stuff all weekend, so I haven't looked at any of them. And so I have no update to give except that I'm going to take everybody's comments. I'm going to take a com couple of the comments that we got. We got a couple of uh, residents who gave comments. I don't know if you have a comment on that. No, good. Um, and I will start to hammer out a draft document that we'll have something to actually discuss at okay. the next meeting. That's and I will try it and I, you know, I'll get it out yeah, in a week fine. kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I will say one thing that I, I would, uh, that I'm going to see if I can work into it is I think that the, the part about having the names of real people and a local contact it's very should important. be for every rental, not just short-term rentals. Yeah. Oh. Right? I didn't look at it that way. Okay. But I would agree with that. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can sort of work that into it as well. Again, it'll be something for discussion. Okay. That being said, anybody else have something they wanna say? This the point. only thing I was really sort of thought was a, a very good point, and I would think that it would satisfy many of the comments I got from residents is to not allow a full time um, short term rental establishment to have a limit on how many how many days or oh, how yeah. much yeah. time can can would Absolutely. be allowed so that no businesses could come in and make a really sort of Airbnb hotel, yeah. you know, in a neighborhood. I so I thought that was, like yeah, so that was the, what I thought was sort of predominant amongst, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of other little comments, but that to me was something that would be sort of unique to Tuxedo. Right. Also the multi, I, the, along that line, it said something about the people owning more than one. Uh, so, Within the first year, you can only have one, but then every year after that, you can add one. I'm thinking every, every after two, you're not allowed to have any more. Okay. Because then that becomes the problem. The business. The, it, yeah. Like in New York City, where people have like a whole building where it's all Airbnbs and there's no places for people to live because they're all being yeah. used up. No, no so. I had a similar comment. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so. everyone can Yay. add one per year. Is there no limit? No limit. One. Eventually, I'll own all of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So. It'll be uh, Pottersville, right? Is that yeah. what right. it's called? So that's what I'm thinking. I know I saw I saw the the one for uh, Warwick had two per people. You want, you're only allowed two in, you know, in the one yeah. town. So if you Just want to have more, more than then, then go someplace else. Not well, either. under the eligibility, uh, and I'm, I know you're not really. Yeah, no, that's fine. You're going to send it to me. Yeah, I am. But. You know, it talks about permit shall only be issued for one single family detached dwelling per lot. It really doesn't cover condos, apartments, yeah, co ops. That yeah, no, that's, that's, that's in absolutely. There. Um, and uh, this notion of uh, four persons per bedroom. Yeah, no, I think uh, yeah. yeah. two. Me too. I think yeah. we all brought that one up. Yeah, but I, I saw the comments. Too, yeah. <laughs> what? I was yeah. Like, I, so I, I was one of the, in um, Los Angeles, and they have a, they have a two, two bedroom. Two occupants two per, per, per bedroom. bedroom. Yeah. And I mean, then, I, I thought and maybe. And then there's some kind of accommodation for children. I was going to say, yeah, they have a baby like, have a or bonus something. Room yeah, and you can stuff like that. It's two adults, but, as many children as you can fit under the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, all of them. Well, sometimes people have like a young child, they put the, the child, like a crib or something Nobody's in their gonna, room. But, huh? And there was yeah, a nobody's going to complain about it. And there were yeah. different eligibilities for. Uh, um, Five-acre lots, I think it was. Yeah, that uh, was sort of excessive. You um, know, it's like uh, well, I, you saw my. You'll see I, my I saw. Comments. I saw, it, and I won't yeah. go through everybody's comments. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. But I, I gave you my scratch copy, so in case you had a question, you could, you could just. Okay. I tried to type it out, but. It's okay. And then about the digital monitoring. Yeah, isn't that a little... I don't know why that wouldn't be. First of all, I would want to make sure that it wasn't. Uh, those camera angles weren't on the neighbors. That it's on the house. So making sure that it's 
shooting from the house, from the street to the house, not out. I don't really feel like being on camera if if the the goal is to monitor the traffic in and out of a, of a short term rental. That would some, and I I'd, I'd be thinking if it's digitally available, why couldn't the uh, inspector or the police also have access to that so they could decide, do I really need to go out there now? I mean, if, if uh, the you owner can't, can see not without it, you, you can't do that. Yeah, I don't think, we, not, not in this country. Okay. If you want that, you got to go to Russia or China. I brought that up too. You know, I don't know if that's legal. Well, um, if I could add something, uh, the I think I said it in my notes, but up in Lake Placid, they have rules. You can only rent out on, on this basis a certain number of days yeah we would yeah, we're gonna, yep. we yeah i know it's but it, it's actually i can get the you know how it's set up up in lake placid and uh you can see that that's definitely and it's pretty prohibitive because they want the people that own it to be using it they don't want it to be turned into a business you know but there they also have hotels so um, they want to protect the hotel industry that they have. The tuxedo oh, doesn't sure. they have any hotels. So yeah, but plus also the neighbors. They, I mean, they need a break. It can't be 365 days a year of, hey neighbor, what you got going on over there? You know, it's like, no, nah, not not very attractive for the, the homeowners. Anyway, so our goal wasn't to be discussing like we are right now, but well, just, it's just, this is this is good. But you know, like I said, I haven't had a chance to compile this yet. So, yeah. you know, the issue. Feel free. Three to call strikes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the three strikes rule on page nine. Uh, you know, you got to restart again. Uh, basically, three violations. Um, I think that's a good one. Uh, and limiting the number of vehicles, and certainly yeah. the screening and stuff of vehicles. Uh, will also help control the party element. Yes. Okay, so we have a direction for that. So then we had another consideration for hiring an additional police officer. Um, so I'm sure you all know uh, Stefan Christian is retiring. Uh, so we actually are making an offer to a police officer who's gone through training. He's, a, he's already a fully certified police officer. Um, he's somebody that was trained by John Trezino uh, for another police force, so he actually knows the, the, uh, the officer we're considering, and uh, I actually did a ride around, so we, and he did very well in the interview, so we're prepared to make an offer. He's been passed by Orange County, um, met all the qualifications, so basically that candidate is to replace Stefan Christian. Uh, then we are, are already have on our budget for 2023 an additional police officer. So uh, I just want to let you know, when you call for these lists, as fast as they come out, people are snatching up the qualified candidates. So uh, uh, the, uh, we have another officer that we're running up the flagpole, so to speak, with Orange County. I expect that he, he will also be approvable. And uh, Chief Trezino is anxious to make an officer an offer to that officer. He's a, uh, uh, I think I've shared the uh, resumes with you, but he's uh, an experienced uh, NYPD officer who lives in Slotesburg and has a new baby and has done six years with the SWAT team in uh, Washington Heights. And uh, that's a very challenging position. He's anxious to work for us. And uh, so then what this is about, those positions are already on the book, so to speak. Um, we have another, we have, we're continuing with interviews and I'd like the board to uh, approve hiring an additional full-time officer because that's, that's the minimum recipe we need to really restore the A-line. And, and that really just barely gets us to where we need to move in that direction. And this should be the, this should be the officer that we're going to hire in 2024 anyway. Right. So, so you're bumping it into 2023? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But we certainly have the funds for it. Yeah. certainly have the funds. And I'd also like to point out these new officers coming on board. We're, we're actually looking for people that are not uh, uh, academy. Uh, so these, so not only by hiring these people, they're trained officers and can hit the streets literally running. And uh, um, 
but they're not coming in at step 10. They're coming in based on their experience. So, and then our contract, Howard, I think we give 50% uh, credit for the time. So if somebody had five years of credit, the town board could give them two and a half years. I think that's what the formula is. I'd have to actually look at that. But my basic point is they'll be coming in at a much lower salary than our current officers. Right. Just because of the, the experience. Because of, because of seniority. Uh, uh, Going up time, time, in, time, time in position. Right, exactly. Right, so, so not to, I'm not going to say it, someone yell at So it's not a budget bust. Also. Right. So, so, um, so you're looking for what? A resolution, a feeling of the board? Well, I, I'd like Howard to really, I need authorization to be able to pursue this officer and uh, if, if, whether to pursue a third officer. So okay. is and that a resolution? Do, do, you, do you know what salary level, what the tier is, that they, what step they would be coming in at? Um, I don't envision anybody above step five. Okay. All right. So then you want an authorization to be able to solicit a, uh, an additional police officer at a cost, um, a compensation cost, uh, attributable to, to not greater than step five on the union contract. For that matter, I don't know why we wouldn't say seven just to make sure I'm not crossing anybody off that might be an excellent candidate. So um, then, then let me say seven, seven then. Uh, but let me also point out, it, it would be very rare for an officer to make that switch because to get lifetime medical benefits with the town, you have to do 20 years with the town. So that would mean somebody would have to serve as 27 years. It's unlikely. But if there was such a candidate, I would hate to be tied that we couldn't move forward uh, mm -hmm. with somebody like that. So moved. Uh, so uh, uh, I made the motion. Do okay. I have a second? I'll have a second. OK. Uh, as per Howard's instructions, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, department updates, uh, do you have anything? Sure. Marissa? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'll be quick. Um, Your say... microphone's not on, by the way. Oh, it is. I was looking at the <laughs> one next to you. Sorry. I have two for a backup. Um, I just want to say congratulations to all the recent graduates out there. I wish them luck in their future endeavors. Um, another happy occasion, a tuxedo resident who happens to be my grandmother-in-law, but she turned 100 on June 23rd. Wow. Read it. Yeah. Read it. Yeah. Uh, town hall will be closed on Tuesday, July 4th. Uh, there will be no interference with IWS pickup for town residents, remain on a regular schedule. And a reminder, hopefully weather permitting, the Youth Fishing Derby will be Saturday, July 8th from 9 to 12. And that's at the uh, um, Watchtower. Watchtower Pond. The old inter international paper. Yes. Okay. Yep, along Meadow Road. And I'm sure there's flyers and stuff. Yes. Like that. Yeah, flyers. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm into make put them out, out, out and also putting them on social media. We've been so busy with camp, but as that gets, you know, because that is going to be short. I, I have been take. I told my neighbor across the street from me, who has a little boy, I think this would be the first thing that he can attend in, in town. He's like four. <laughs> It'll be fun. Yes. And that's it for me tonight. Thank you. I'm going to skip my supervisor's update. Do you guys have updates you want to get? Um, I'll just move from left to right. How about that? I have, I have um, only, only two. Most of it's boring stuff that I've been doing that nobody cares about anyway. Um, two things. So the first thing we discovered as we're working through procurement and starting into um, budgeting and, and et cetera, that the bulk of the town's monies have been sitting in accounts that are not interest bearing accounts, which we're working on changing. The interest rate is not huge. It's the one and three quarter percent or something like that. We just we found out about this because the, the bank said, hey, we can raise your interest rate. Um, so we're just working on shifting money into accounts that bear interest at the amount of money that the town is holding at that interest rate. We're talking about something in the neighborhood, 
don't write this down exactly, of $150,000 a year in interest, so it's not small money. Yeah. And then this has nothing to do with the stuff that Michelle is starting to work on and we're, we're going to be working on about real investments. Class, right? this, is, this is just money that's parked day to day. That's with the Chase Bank accounts. Yes. Yeah, uh, our representative, we're, we're prepared to make those transfers almost immediately. Yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, adjusting the checking account. Kind of yeah. Thing. Um, the other thing is, and this sort of goes back to a couple of things that came up in the discussion of Tuxedo Farms. I've been asked a couple of times by various people, so what about Lennar? Are they still in or are they gone? And uh, there was a phone call last week. Um, Ken was on, John was on, I think. Um, Sean was on. Lennar is starting to ask questions about how to interpret some of the documents. So they are definitely in and getting ready to start doing some of their pieces. And one of the big comments to something that Evelyn brought up, they were starting to ask questions about dark sky compliant streetlights and whether various <laughs> fixtures were gonna meet the, you know, so it's definitely on the, on everybody's radar. I just, um, so just a quick, I mean, we talked about the salary for the, the people we hired from camp, but we have 78 signed up. Wow, have, good for you. Yeah, 78. So we have 59 residents and 19 uh, non-residents, and we, we're still uh, getting new kids. We got three new sign-ups today. Good. <laughs> so, That's the most um, I've heard so far. I know. I know. Good for you. Yeah, so we have, uh, we're, we're, we have a budget that's working, but honestly, the reason I didn't share with you guys is because not all the bills are in, the main things are in, um, our staffing is in, and you know most of the other things like transportation and things like that, we were able to get transportation down, so, but we, because we don't have all exact numbers. I Does it look like we're going to break even? Can huh? you at least tell us that? Um, just give us pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Pretty close. It's where we're, you know, whatever the town is putting in, it looks like it's going to be a lot less than last year. So. Well, you still have the variable. There's a few things. Uh, the transportation costs are as high as they could possibly right. be. Right. We, we have part of the transportation contract is if it's a rainy day and you can't, you cancel two hours before, guess what? You don't pay for the bus. So the those numbers, the, the, bus, the bus expenses can only go down. Yeah, right. and but the, it's a forecast anyway. Yeah, it's a and forecast. And the uh, revenues for the Friday field trips, you, you can't possibly No, and we didn't put that in. We didn't put up. the revenue for the, yeah. for the Friday because those are, you know, but that. But those expenses are, for the buses but are the, built But in. I did put the buses in, so is that Where are we? Um, so <laughs> we are at the total, well, we're total estimated, the revenue right now right of the state is 52,870, 850, and for the campers and so on. And then 22,000, 47,000 for, for the personnel and 22,000 for the other stuff. And that includes um, WeWa, bus, the app, we were rental, field day, material so shirts. So it's about 15,000. Over, over it. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So yeah, good. So. so we're losing, so that's. No, no, but again, the, uh, the money for the Fridays has not been. It's not it. It's yeah. not yeah. it. But it's that's still already. It's already. already yeah, we're like $10,000 less than last yeah. year. Yeah. Mostly, I'm going to say, you know, Kathleen is really great at negotiating, but also it, all of us, you know, working with a bus company, was a really huge challenge. <laughs> and now I'm hoping, oh my God, I hope we don't have so many kids that we have to get another bus, but I think we can manage. <laughs> so has the school and, uh, signed off on the contract and, and uh, Mayor McFadden, I know we were waiting for a meeting. Yeah, we that, have that, that meeting is happening right now. Oh, okay. They had to postpone it last, I mean, they may be done, but that okay. meeting was happening today. But they already, but we I mean, they, yeah, they already. They agreed in principle. They agreed, but yeah, they agreed I need principle. a signed document. Yeah, but we do have the one from the bus. So okay. That one is signed. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm enjoy. good. I'm good. Michelle. 
Okay, I guess the main thing I'm working on is the any changes that have to be made to the investment policy. Actually, our investment policy pretty much covers everything we could possi possibly do with the NY class, but I want to double check that. So, um, and then, so exactly what is it you're doing with the, the money right now until we change the investment policy? The checking account didn't have any interest. So now it's an interest right. bearing checking account. All it is, is that Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Okay. It's just it's just the bank accounts are now paying whatever interest they are paying as opposed to zero. Yeah. Oh, OK. Got it. So we're not we're, right. not, so. It, we're not we're not committing any monies. It's not changing any liquidity or any of that kind of stuff. It's just while it's parked there, it might as well be working. Sure. Sounds good. So um, I'll have something for the next meeting. I'm sorry, you broke up. Say that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll have it. I'll have it for before the next meeting. I'm sorry. I, my head is so clogged oh, right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. You're... You know, did you, I, I just, well, I mean, we're down to just a few people. I can't believe I got COVID. <laughs> so oh, wow. Well, well, oh, well. That's what happens when you go to England. Eventually, everybody's <laughs> going to get it. That's what my doctor I does. guess so. Are you, are you anyway. okay? Yeah, she's still up, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move. I'm trying. To I'm trying my best. Minutes. Minutes. I'll make a motion, ask for a second to accept the minutes of the regular bi monthly town board meeting held on June 12, 2023. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Deirdre Murphy. Uh, any comments, questions, edits? All in favor? Aye. 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 Cheers. I'll make a motion as for a second that the following vouchers having been audited. Do we have the power? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, so having been audited by the town board, I hereby approve for payment claims number 201292921766 through 201292 Please note 201292 was deleted. It was a duplicate. Um, do I have a second on that? I'll second. Seconded by Maria. Any comment, questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, public comments. Wow. Wow. You just, Everybody else went home. You, you didn't have anything better to do with a Monday night. I, I think Evelyn <laughs> is still here. Cheers. <laughs> uh, okay, no public comments. Other business, I don't think we have any other business. Uh, okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn at uh, 9.54. 9.54 it is. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Feel better, Michelle. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.